groaning like a geezer. The moral of the story is, folks, don't mess with the Gorn. Welcome, everybody. You are watching episode number 65, can you believe it, of Greybeard's studio. Today is a special day, not only because we're doing Star Trek villains finally, uh, but we're actually bringing you two, not just one, but two special guests on this show. Uh, so uh, let's get this thing rocking and rolling uh, and uh, see what uh, mayhem we can... Uh, get ourselves into uh off the bat let's bring in the number one guy you know him you love him it's david williams there he is and providing <laughs> with more epileptic seizure uh hey hey aaron is it true yeah. that you watch is it true that you watch gorn hub <laughs> Yeah. Okay, that you know, you're not supposed to talk about that, dude. It's like <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back and edit this. Okay. Um, here's a guy that's old enough remembers Trek when it was uh, when it's you know first came out on NBC. It's uh, Gary Martin. Hey, Gary. G money. I already, have, I already have a beef with you. Oh God, what now? I thought I was your number one guy. <laughs> well, there's a number one guy like in a Batman movie, and I was like, you're my number one guy. And I don't know if you want to be anybody's number one guy if it's like yeah, that. See, I think it's I think it's because I'm white. It could there be. You go. It could be. White, white-ish. Everybody knows the truth, G Money. I, I don't play. think no, I don't think Gary's white-ish. I think he's all the way white. He's glowing. <laughs> so um all right. So let's hey, let's there. let's uh let's bring in our, our guests. We talk about diverse and i mean in terms of what these guys do for a living um first of all let me see who should i bring in first I'll, I'll tell you what you know him you love him you begged for me to get him on this show because it's star trek ladies and gentlemen welcome the man himself graham nolan welcome your graham. Thank you, graham. now doctor <laughs> Nerd. Of course, of course, you know. <laughs> wait a minute, wait Graham a minute. Who Nolan. Has the to say nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Graham Nolan, you son of a bitch. <laughs> now what did what was it? What did what did um Ron Garney say after the show last week when I, I said, Oh, we're all a bunch of nerds? And he goes, No, we're men who just happen to like stuff that nerds like. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I replied, that's exactly what a nerd would say. <laughs> 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 okay, now our our special guest, you know, Graham's special, but our special special guest today. Graham um, with special needs. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna find out right. where you live. <laughs> now, David found this guy on Instagram, and he said, "Aaron, check this guy's stuff out." And I did, and he is a painter. He he's had gallery showings. He is a commercial illustrator, but the most fascinating thing I think is the guy is a mural artist, okay, as well. And I'm going to talk to him a lot about that. And I'm also going to really destroy his name, even though backstage we went over it about a hundred times. I'm going to let. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to try it. Here we go. And I asked for okay, an econ Eudophia, ladies and gentlemen. Here he is. Say hello. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I didn't put you too bad, did I? A Neocon? You don't. A Neocon, yeah. A Neocon. I got, I see, I got to get that. A Neocon. A Neocon. Okay. okay. Yeah. 
I'm not there was a Star there Wars was, character. I mean, a Star. I, I need a con. I know him. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the thing. I it takes me a long time. There was this football player. Uh, he's still in the NFL. His name is Indomitian Sue, and he went to Nebraska. And I'm a big Nebraska fan. And it took me a year to figure out how to pronounce that guy's name. Now it's in my head, and I never get it wrong. But uh, so it's going to take me this time next year I'm be <laughs> with it. Um, all right, gentlemen. I know that uh, you're all big Star Trek fans, right? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know, David was, uh, David, I don't know, in Twitter this week, he was feeling a little bit of the pressure, I think, of uh, this, didn't want Star Trek. So I, I think, I think he's, he's talking a little trash, but I don't know if he can back it up. We'll find out. We will find out. But before we do that, let's check and see who's in the chat. Say hello to our people and um, get this show on the road. Coram, all the way from Australia, he says, are there any hot female Star Trek villains asking for a friend? Well, that's the only kind of villains I'm looking for. So, uh, Jay, that's very specific. Yeah, well, you know, uh, is here Henry Jeremek? Finally, he's been begging for this forever, and he's finally getting his wish. Uh, Star Trek villains. A uh, sequential artist is here. Um, he says a little known but insidious threat to all Starfleet crew are the replicated corn dogs. Gary would know all about that, I'm sure. <laughs> The corn doggery will never end on this show. All hey, all corn dogs by definition are replicated. Yes. Well, I guess that's true, isn't it? <laughs> it's true. It just depends on what they're replicating or what they're using for source material. Yeah, that's as far as I want to know. <laughs> uh, Ronan is here. Leg kick is here because uh, he's almost always here. Graham Nolan's in the chat and on screen. Uh, Bibliobob is here all the way from across the pond. Test Chimp is joining us. Repairman Jack. John with no H is here. 40 year old Graybeard. He says, Oh, Kirk, my old friend. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Uh, but he's here. Stippling Vaughn, Kel Razor, John with no H for $5 already. Thank you so much. He says, D Wams needs to draw Uhura getting out of the Trek shower with nothing but tribbles attached to her. Make it so, number one. <laughs> I would never do that for this reason alone, is that she's my aunt. So, no. You're so full of it. She is. No, they're, yeah, David, they're related. No. They're... Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> Michelle Nichols is your aunt? aunt? Yes. Oh, my. You didn't know that, Eric? I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. I'm that's stunned. Cool. Yeah. Now I have like reverence for you now that I've never had before. <laughs> I have a little <laughs> higher opinion of David now. I know. <laughs> wow. It's not you know, just it's not just who you know, it's who you're related to. As long as we're <laughs> dropping uh relative bombs, you know who I'm related to? Oh brother, who? Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't I believe knew. that, Gary. I think that's a fabrication. And I wouldn't uh, brag about that. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> that's why no one knows. Yeah. Uh Ozhead for $1.99 says, Hey Aaron, going to draw Kirk with a triple to pay. No, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna go 3D chess on you today. Uh, Birdman Burr is here. Pantheon. Richie Dupe here in the steadfast. Ellie the Broken until the Broken Three. Fox Mulder is here. Uh, Nordic Nerd has joined us. One, two, but not three is here. Bloody Drake. Wow. Um, Robert the Bruce is joining us. Gen X Catholic. Uh, da, 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 da. Kevin Tom said all the way from the UK. We got people from all across the globe joining us today. Brian Norton from Japan. How about that? Uh, let's see who else we got here. Do to do. Daniel Russell is here. Zombie Chow. He's a monster. Dave DiPetro says my favorite weekly show in Star Trek Two. Live on and live long and prosper, guys. Thank you. Appreciate that. Dave. I think that's pronounced DiPetro. Well, you know how I am with uh, names. No, it has pie in, in you know in the in the word, so I'm going to emphasize that. Well, they never did that in the, in the uh, like the Marvel comics with Pietro. The well, they, uh, they, yeah, it's Marvel. It's silver. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, Nomsky, Henry Bemis, all the way from Oregon. Wizard sleeves who constantly confounds Gary and confuses him. Uh, Ignite is here. 
J. Dread, Best Age Comics, Marcus Killigrew, purveyor of all things pop culture knowledge, Nate313, Fane Lowlife, Fallen Lowlife. Sorry, I keep doing that. Once again, screwing up the names. Uh, Captain, uh, Captain Bipto is here. My goodness, what a crowd we have. Alpha Channel. Kino Can you imagine Rakim. having all these, all these people gathered in the same room? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> It'd be like a con. Con! con! Oh, actually, you know what? I've got that. Con! Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Perfect timing for today, too. How about that? Dan, the pizza man Genovese is here. Um... And then, so, oh my gosh, this is why I have trouble with names. So, Kyrialt Einon. That's as in good as one. I got, Graham. In one. <laughs> oh, is it what? I think it's in one. In one? Okay, yeah. well. Uh, Gordon Goodbrother is here. Nate313. Mike Wilson. They keep rolling in and we keep accepting them. You guys yeah. hit the like and subscribe if you don't mind. We appreciate your attendance. The show is booming, and it's all because of guys and gals like you. Thank you There's guys. A lot so of names much. in the chat that I'm not familiar with. So uh, howdy to everybody. Yeah. Uh, Bri Bri uh, Byron Smith. Uh, Brian Smith is saying Aaron's going to do Evil Kirk from the Enemy Within. Mm, give me the brandy. You know what you missed last night, Graham, on the professionals? We were all over the place, but we. We're doing uh, videos of uh, Shatner uh, doing Tambourine Man and Rocket oh. Man. Have you seen the live Rocket Man one where Bernie Toppin comes out there and introduces him? It's like I don't a, think so. Oh, my gosh. You could tell by looking at Bernie Toppin that he was, like, horrified that he had to come out there and say, I'm thrilled to have to announce that William Shatner is going to be doing his rendition of Rocket Man. And you could just tell by looking at his face. He and Shatner's sitting there on the steps. He kind of leaned back. He's got a cigarette in his mouth or his hand. He's going, he starts, you know, talking through the song, you know, dramatically as he does. And oh, well, that and I've seen, but I never saw the introduction. Oh, gosh. It's on, it, yeah. it's, it's the whole thing's on YouTube. You got to check it out because it's like <laughs> my, my favorite of his is Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, where, <laughs> yeah, where that he goes good. with tangerine dreams and marmalade skies. <laughs> Mr. Tambourine Man. Mr. Tambourine Man. Marmalade Scott. <laughs> John Lennon is just rolling over right now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So, you guys, let's do a little quick round of show and tell. Uh, David, you got anything for us? Yeah. Well. Bow! That was from uh, last <laughs> week. That was from yeah, last that's week. the finished piece. Yeah, when I whooped y'all guys' ass. Um, <laughs> you didn't say it last hey, week, so, hey, you know. I did. I just couldn't do it on screen, so I had to uh -huh. But I still whooped your ass. Okay. Anyway, All right. That was my Spider-Man. Uh, that's nice. Yeah, now, that's great. upside down, though, isn't it? Nope. Where, where's your signature at, dude? Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> I'll give you that. You're right. Now once. it looks good. Now it actually looks good. So okay, it's right side up. Yeah, he's got all the weight on the straight arm. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so use uh, would you use colored pencil on there or black? Uh, um... uh, my pencil. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> but that those are those. Um... Oh, God, what are they called? Not the they're not Crayolas. They're um... grease pencils. Yeah, but aren't they? There's a no. They're literally just regular Prisma pencils. Prisma that's pencils what I meant. There. Prisma, Prisma, right? Uh, the Prisma Black, right? Yeah, that's what he said. Yes. <laughs> Why well, didn't? Right, that's what I. <laughs> you, I was t busy talking, David. How can yeah. I hear what you were saying? <laughs> well, yeah, that's that goes without saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so that's all I got. Okay, well, that's very nice. That's a that's. I mean, I can't show any of the other stuff that I'm doing for Ethan. But, right. Um, Can you I'm just like finished. pass it in front of the camera quickly? No. <laughs> it's um, just like run by. It, it's spoiler stuff. Um, but oh, I'm finished great. penciling that thing, and I'm going to be finished inking it totally here pretty soon. So. And you're talking about the entire first issue, right? Not just yeah. the preview pages. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. yes. <clears throat> Excellent. Gary, what have you got? Because like you got a lot um, of 
I haven't been doing artwork this week. I've been shipping my uh, art book. You know, I've got your book, I'm, but I haven't opened it yet because I want to do an a unboxing video. Okay, that'd be cool. Um, so I sprinkled some pages that I'm either are on Comic Art Fans or I will be putting up on Comic Art Fans. This is like I did a bunch of military <laughs> stories, World War II and, and Afghanistan stories. Here's oh, wow. some the original art that I'll wow. be putting putting up for sale on Comic Art Fans. That's nice. awesome. Nice M1. Oh, that's all I got. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad to see you're keeping yourself gainfully employed. Look at that. You know, we've talked about this before, but man, the detail the the to getting the, the uniforms right and all the tech stuff, what a yeah. pain in the butt, man. It is especially for modern military stuff. It's yeah, not as yeah. Modern, it's World War II stuff, you know. There's yeah, <laughs> very very clean delineations of uniform and gear. Whereas like, yeah, the know, modern these guys, they got so much gear on them, uh, and their uniforms blend with it. It's hard to tell what's what. Right, mm -hmm. and yeah, you're right, Graham. And and with modern uniforms, they kind of customize based on what they want to carry, and so they're mm -hmm. all different. You know, like mm -hmm. World War. World War One, World War Two, they were all exactly the same. You know, yeah, nowadays, the guns were a lot easier to draw. I mean, you know, right. you're looking at like those M4s, and they got all these little holes in them, and, and lines, and, and various planes and stuff. And then you look at the M1. You know, you got the wood, you got the clip, you got the <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, you draw it once, and you're you can repeat it. Yeah, these things, yeah, reference city. So Oz Ozhead, uh, comic art fans. I don't know if you are familiar with that website, but I have a gallery with a bunch of stuff for sale on, on there. Um, Robert the Bruce for four ninety nine says Atlas Comics was winning by the biggest margin ever in the middle of the night. Somehow Trek won. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like, some some Democrats got a hold of that. Uh, I don't know what, <laughs> what the implication. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are implying here, but uh, some this socialist. is Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> Some socialist voted track over no, and over and no. over. I had no, I was <laughs> all above board for the most part. Um, Graham, do you have anything you'd like to share with the folks? Uh, well, just that uh, Ghost of Matacumba Key is almost done fulfilling uh, with the regular books. Um, we got the uh, uh, CGC books back uh, today, so we just got to go through those and make sure. Uh, the casings are all good and none of them are busted or anything like that. And then we'll start shipping those out. So this bad boy is just about ready. That's awesome. And then it'll go on my website, compasscomics.com, once my backers are fulfilled. That is a great cover, by the way. Oh, thank yeah. you. Great cover. And we'll take a real uh, quick second here to uh, take a look at Return to Monster Island here. Oh, thank uh, you. Sure. Look at that! You're 109,705 bucks, 1379 backers, rocking and rolling. So this is in demand right now, correct? Yeah, yeah. I just started with, at the hundred thousand mark. Uh, there was a stretch goal where I was going to add this eight-page story called Kirby Cigar, and I just laid it out today. Uh, it's going to be kind of an over-the-top Mad Magazine style, you know, uh, Eisner wood look to it. Um, oh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Excellent. So that'll be part of this now in, in the yep. back of the book then? Yep. Yeah. In, in the cool. um, the Return to Monster Island book, it'll be in that. Okay. Excellent. So you guys, if you can follow the link in the description and uh, this video to get to Graham's Monster Island campaign. He's even got t-shirts or some artwork in here. Uh, <laughs> what's going on there? Yeah. We don't want to know what's going on. Off He's town. waking up from his dream. Okay. Oh, all right. they, they, there he is. <laughs> there he is. He's on the beach with a you know the fine young lass. So oh, I love that shot with a seagull in the foreground eating the whatever. <laughs> exactly. That's great. Um, but anyway, you guys, like I said, links in the uh, description of this video. If you want, if you haven't backed Return to Monster Island, please go over there and do so. You will not be sorry. Graham always delivers, and he delivers on time too, which sure is uh, nice. And if you uh, miss first monster oh, oh. island you can get the two together there's a ketchup package there it's uh so you, you don't you don't have to worry about missing out there you go uh tracer x for five dollars he says i voted for narnia characters but the stream is still going to be fire hashtag 
I stand with Brohawk, oh, brother. <laughs> There's we, something uh, you want to share, David? That you, you no, have wait a minute, hang on a second. Wait a second. Stand with you. Tracer no. needs no. Tracer needs an attitude adjustment. <laughs> to knock the <laughs> sense of all. All right. <laughs> All right, an econ. Hey, I did it. Um, do you have anything you want to? Uh, I've got your website and I've got your um, Instagram up that we can take a look at that. Or if you've got something you want to share. Yeah, I actually have um, some stuff, uh, some comic book stuff I've been drawing because um, that's how I like. That's that's my first love. So I have like um, these kind. Oh wait, wait. Yeah, there it is. It's like wow, nice. nice. There. Now, what That's did you awesome. use? What did what did you use? Is that uh, paint? Is that markers? I can't tell. Yeah, it's ink, and uh, I use some a little bit of paint markers for the brightest areas. Mm -hmm. Wow! Yeah. and then I also speaking of Spider Man, uh, I did this. Ooh, nice! And Spider Man, awesome. and Daredevil. Look at that. Wow! Very and nice. I also have um, Catwoman. Woo! Nice angle. Oh, very cool. Nice. I love, uh, dude, that's a great angle, too. Yeah, very oh, nice. Goodness. And there's also Catwoman over here. But where? Okay, there she is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, the Catwoman, what uh, what medium is that? This one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, the Catwoman. That one is, this one is digital. Oh, you did oh, all okay. that digital? I printed it out on canvas, and then I embellished it with oil paint. Oh, oh wow. wow. Oh, that's sure. a cool technique. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's wow. nice. Good power. Kind of yeah, has a Tony yeah. Salmons look to it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Oh, look at that. Re Read my kidding? mind. Jeez. Jeez, check that out, man. Ninja Turtle. Turtles, oh, yeah. Last Ronin. And then um, there's this guy, Sabretooth. Wow. Dang, man. For detail. So I, I see on your Instagram page you have a couple of comic illustrations, but mostly this other the other stuff that you do. But you are a big comic book fan, though. Is that oh, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's where um, the whole thing. That's what I wanted to do, <laughs> but <laughs> somehow I landed at murals. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So that's um, just a few. I have a lot of them. I don't want to take up the whole show. Well, show. that's that's I, fine. I, I, we want to see your stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm feeling a little nervous now. So I'm like, maybe I, <laughs> I know, right? I may have Sheesh. to kick him. I may have to kick him now. <laughs> yeah, we might have to kick you out. As soon as we see a hint of what you're doing and it's looking good, you're out of here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we got to make ourselves look good first. You understand how it goes. Um, all right, gentlemen, let's get drawn. And then um, I'll get in and start uh, asking you more technique questions to distract you. Uh, so, um, <laughs> But uh, David, so what are you going to do for us today? Um, I'll give you the theme song. All right, there it is. You heard it here first. No big surprise there. No, I'll 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 do I'll probably I'll probably do I was thinking of doing uh both versions of Khan, the one from the recent movie and the other one, but they're both saying Khan, but one is saying C O N to the Cumberbatch <laughs> one, you know. So <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. You mean the know. really, we'll really see. white con? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I might right, do bro. that, or I'll just oh. simply just do Spock. No, or these, wait. These are just do Batman. Spock, so I can't do it. I'll just do Tribble. Yeah, that's what I thought. I knew that was coming because those things go up your butt, don't they? I That's don't what think. I heard. What the heck? I'm gonna have to kick you. <laughs> this is a kids show. Man, can you believe this? Um, what tracky uh, conventions are you going to, David? <laughs> exactly. I think you're. Those are furry conventions you're going to, David. Oh, that's what I heard. I, yeah, I'm you get a little confused what I heard. there. Uh, Graham, gotcha. what are you going to do for us today? I'm deeping, deep diving into the third season, and, uh -oh. and one of. One of the only really good third season episodes is Spectre of the Gun. So I'm going to do the Malkotian. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Graham, I have no idea what you just oh, said. No, you're speaking a whole other language. <laughs> no, I'm like, what the heck? Do you understand what you're saying? 
I have no, no idea. <laughs> no, no, no. The cool thing Just about the hey, yeah. hey, find my middle finger. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Graham. It's another a- another hilarious <laughs> Trekkie joke. <laughs> Look at it. It's Star Trek scissors. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Uh, <laughs> man, that's good. The Malkotians, you only see them there for a little bit, but they're really kind of creepy and weird looking. So that'll yeah, be cool. like a big booger. <laughs> All right. Now, Anikon, you said you weren't much of a, a Trek guy, so you had to kind of do a little research. So what are you going to be doing for us? I'm um, just I, I'm just gonna go with the low hanging fruit. I'm gonna do um, Gorn. Oh, that's a good go. choice, though. Right. That may be low hanging fruit, but that's a good choice. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm do Gorn. Uh, thankfully, Gorn. I'm I'm gonna go Mugatu with a little extra. That's all I'm saying at this point. Freaking so, nerds! Okay, Aaron, what? Yeah. <laughs> Please what? explain yourself. <laughs> David, you drew Star Trek comics. And you're calling us nerds. Give me a break. yeah. I mean. I needed to pay rent. You <laughs> had not to do it love. <laughs> you drew it and we read it. So yeah. there you go. It's your fault. Wait, you started wait, all the, of this. Is the green and, then, and I'll from season seven, I'll be drawing flange bit. Yeah. Season seven. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. All right, that's it. I can't take any more of this. Goodbye. Wait, 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 wait. No, Gary's oh, gone. <laughs> season seven? Oh my gosh. Uh, all right. I'll all right, you're, you're bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm back on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> stop it. Okay. <clears throat> now, hey, those wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Is the green chick a villain? Yes, she was in the third season. What was that episode called, Graham? Where they're in the crazy house? Do you remember? Um, yeah, I try to block. Whom that gods one. destroy? Was that it? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. How do you know the titles of the episodes? Because we've seen them a million times. That's right. (laughs) Gary, Gary, you have to invest in something in your life, okay? Besides corn dogs. And that's what you picked? You know more about corn dogs than I know about track. (laughs) (laughs) What what was Frank Gorshin's character? The Riddler. Besides that, oh, I mean, Star Trek, oh, he was yeah, the good. black on one side, white on the other side guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do oh, don't that. pretend like you're saying, Oh, the guy, you know exactly what his name is, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> you freaking nerd. I don't, I don't actually, because that's another shitty episode that I never watch. I, uh, oh, dang, that's right. He was, he was baiting you, but you didn't take it, much like uh, Kirk uh, uh, baited the uh. Orions who are surgically altered to look like Endorians in Journey to Babel, but let's not get into that right now. That's right. Um, Please, for God's <laughs> sake, let's not get into that. <laughs> okay, so Graham, you guys, this is an excuse for Graham. Graham is old, so he doesn't have the technology to actually have his camera set up so he can draw on screen. So he'll be drawing on his lap, but he will be showing his progress as we go. Now, uh, Ania Khan has the technology sort of, but we were getting feedback and stuff. So we're going to have him draw off camera and kind of show every few minutes what he's doing. David and I will throw ourselves to the wolves and uh, you can watch as we uh, create either wonder or disaster. But uh, so here we go. He's, oh, he's, he's, oh, he's, he's already. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, and that's Frank, beautiful. Frank, he's, 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 all right. <laughs> <laughs> You did that you already? Did that? Graham's yeah. got to leave early. He's not wasting time. Yeah. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Love for this chitter chatter, you old hens. We got to get drawn. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Ready, draw. Yeah, all right. Okay. Ready, who's, steady, draw. But who's uh, who's keeping track anyway? All right. I'm going to I'm gonna start uh, asking some questions here because. Um, let him. Yeah, let him touch the paper with his pencil before you, <laughs> before you start asking questions. Uh, wait a minute. Here we go. Okay. Oh. So there we go. Now I'm gonna have to pull back out because this is a little <laughs> too close. There we go. All right, Iacon, tell us. Um, I want to know when you're doing murals, do you do 
a uh, like a grid system, like you draw a smaller drawing and do a grid system and, and then draw it onto the wall? Do you just free, freelance it and go? Talk a little bit about your mural technique, if you would. So um, I usually get the uh, idea from the client and then I build out um, the sketch. And then from there, um, how I get it on the wall is I use a projector because it's okay. quicker. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, I have a projector. And uh, I, I've, I'm not really good with the, some people use the like squiggly line system but uh, or the grid, but um, yeah. I think the projector is far more efficient. I would think so. Everything what, just translates. What kind, of, what kind of venues are you painting these these murals? Are these like personal, like in people's houses or at events or? Where um, are you doing it's all of the above. So there's some that are commissioned by because uh, I, I live here and I live in Washington D.C. So a lot of those could be government buildings, restaurants, you know, small businesses, um, personal like homes and things like that, schools. So yeah, that's mainly now, the target. Do you use, <clears throat> what kind of paint do you use? Cause I saw some of your pictures. I guess I should probably bring some of them up, but um, yeah. you, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to draw here though. Um, <laughs> Are you using uh, uh, spray can paint or using brush or a combination of both? How, how are you laying the paint on? Yeah, I use a combination of both, uh, which is uh, aerosol and uh, acrylic. But I, I use house paint when I'm doing um, the outdoor. Right. Because house paint is what they, it lasts longer. And um, the spray paint is used for special effects and um, some other, because I think spray paint has a much shorter, I think it's like 10 years, 10 to 15 years. So mm -hmm. I use the house paint. I paint it with house paint and then add the spray paint over the top. I I did um, I did some, well, not murals, but some s larger signs in a uh, restaurant, fast food restaurant. They had a lot of... Um, they did a lot of deep frying. So there was a lot of oil and grease splatter all over the place. And so they wanted the, um, the, the boards done with enamel paint. Like you're basically you're saying is house paint. And uh, so they could clean it without it, you know, coming off. And so I was literally blowing enamel paint through an airbrush doing this stuff and talk about a nightmare. So you're laying yours down with a brush, I assume, right? Like yeah, paint with a brush, and then you go over and touch up with the airbrush. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the spray paint. So um, yeah, this because uh, it's more, it's much more efficient, and it, it makes it, um, it 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 gives it a certain look because sometimes like a blue um, house paint um, might create a certain result when the spray paint is added to it, like a surprise element. Mm. So I, I like doing that with it. He's a monster says, nobody ever paid me, but I tagged the whole block. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count. Yeah, that doesn't count as being qualified as a mural painter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess it does in some circles. But <clears throat> so do you... Um, When, Do you have some of his um, murals? All right, I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up because I, um, and I, I want people to know that uh, Ania Khan's website is in the uh, in the link of the description as well as his Instagram. So you guys go over there and follow him if you haven't. His stuff is really really cool. Um, <laughs> where is it? Here we go. His um, stuff is so cool. We begged him to be on this show. We did. And then uh, he felt sorry for us and obliged. One of the yeah. things we like to do on this show, though, is bring guys in that aren't necessarily comic book artists so we can get kind of a, you know, expose you guys in the chat to something different, but also... So um, you can bang up on him? So. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. All right, hang on a second here. Let me... Uh, as Graham is just running away with this thing while I'm 
toiling with the technology here. Okay. Um, this is your website. So this is just a couple of the murals oh, here you've done. So you're up on a ladder a little bit, I would guess, on some of these, right? Yeah. Um, and most of the time, like this one, the bigger ones, I use um, a lift. Wow. So, wow. That's do, impressive. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, wow. it is. How long does like this, that's Marvin Gaye, right? Mm -hmm. How long did say like the Marvin Gaye take you? Um, it was about three weeks. Wow. So wow. the story about behind the Marvin Gaye piece was I right across the street from where this is, I had created it and they built a house over it. So the people in the community um, protested and said they want their mural back. So wow. the owner of that building where it is now donated the space and I had to repaint it, but I <gasps> changed the concept around from what it was on the other wall. That's great. And so you expect to get, would you say at least 10 years out of this or more? Um, uh, in it's terms the, you said that just the, you said the, there's the, is it the spray paint cans only last 10 years? Is, is that what you're saying? Yeah. So the underneath this is the house, the house paint is what keeps it vibrant for a right. long time. So occasionally like say around 10 to 15 years, I'll, um, it, the spray paint might start fading a little bit mm -hmm. but because of the house paint being the base, it keeps it vibrant enough mm -hmm. to still enjoy. Now, do you are is are you under any obligation to go back in and touch this stuff up, or is it once you're done, it's like, hey, you know, it's outside, whatever happens, happens, kind of thing? Um, sometimes it gets. <laughs> um, I haven't, although I haven't had that much of that problem. Depending on where it is, it might get tagged, uh, and I might have to come clean it up. And or sometimes other times, it's just um, maybe uh, it gets a little faded. And then I have to go and um, touch it up. To okay. Is this stuff I have up right now? Is this digital here that we're looking yeah, at? Yeah, these are some digital pieces that I did. I, and I just started learning how. To, this is um, traditional, by the way. The one with Janelle Monet is traditional. That's traditional. Yeah. So now what, did you, what did you use here? I use spray paint, acrylic, and oil paint. So is this a mural too, or is this no, a? That's on canvas. Okay. <clears throat> so when you say spray paint are you talking about airbrush are you talking about paint cans? No, aer aerosol yeah spray oh. can how so you mask those areas off is that what you do and then or mm -hmm. you just freehand it yeah i mask the entire person and the everything on the foreground and then uh -huh. the background that background is all spray paint i that stencil behind her uh-huh wow that's all spray paint okay now, there was something in here where you had a, uh, I know you're trying to draw and so am I, but we're not getting very far, but I, I, I got to ask you this. Um, yeah, if you're going to get anything done, you have to stop showing his work. <laughs> I know, but look at that. Look at that mural. Oh, man, that is awesome. Wow. Uh, wow. Yeah, that was wow. for Earth Conservation uh, uh, person. And this was private. This was on someone's uh, property. So they, um, they like... Uh, the concept that was about uh, saving animals and nature. Mm -hmm. Was this in Washington? Yes. Um, Aaron, I mean, yeah. uh, 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 Graham, you see this? Yeah. It means step up your game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is in a restaurant, obviously. Yes, there's a, a restaurant here called The Diner, and it's uh, it's very popular. It's been around for a very long time, so they wanted something that uh, spoke to like DC and certain D DC iconic things like the right. cherry blossoms, the monument, the different quadrants mm -hmm. here. And um, looks like something. looks like somebody named uh, Annika and tagged it in the lower left corner. <laughs> yeah, I, I I was gonna look into that. <laughs> <laughs> you find out who's messing with your stuff, man. Uh, yeah, those are some. That's uh, more of the personal piece. Um, 
And wow. I was working digitally because my first love, like I said, believe it or not, was I wanted to be a comic book artist. So my parents were like, not in this house. <laughs> 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 that, that, uh, that sounds familiar. I'm originally from Nigeria, so you oh, know. Okay. Imagine telling your parents uh, that you want to be a comic book artist. Well, did they know. even know what it was when you told them? Oh, they they had no idea. They yeah. so they were really against it. So, well, how how did they know then that that uh, comic book artist don't get <laughs> it papers? just sounded wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it just, exactly. <laughs> It just sounded wrong. <laughs> yeah. One of, my, uh, one of my daughter's friends in school, uh, they they were both Russian immigrants. And um, I used to take my daughter, would wanted to go to the, you know, the Portland comic book shows because they wanted to meet the celebrities, right? And get like autographs and stuff. So I, I told her parents that we were going to a, 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 a comic convention. And the mom thought it was like, something for stand-up comics. She didn't understand. <laughs> it took me, I was sitting there like 20 minutes trying to explain to her and the dad finally stepped in. He goes, I understand. I'll tell her, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm sure that you, you, it means, you know, that means different things to different people from different countries, you know, and it's. Yeah. And my parents started it because I, I was actually, um, me and two other siblings were born here in DC. And then my parents, once they finished, um, their education, they decided we moved back to Nigeria. And I moved right into a serious culture shock. So oh. the one thing that they were doing here that um, started this whole thing with me drawing and ultimately it becoming my career was they would feed us unknowingly, they would feed us a lot of coloring books. Oh. And these coloring books had um, superheroes. So yeah. <laughs> we were busy, like we used to be busy drawing all the time. So it kind of, you know, even at that young age, I knew like this is something I want to do for a very long time. However, you know, it, did, it didn't resonate when, when we moved back to Nigeria. Um, they didn't see it. They saw it like, oh, that's something that children do, you know, mm -hmm. like not something you want to consider a career. But I was really um, hell bent on doing, you know, drawing all the time. And at some point, it, it even started um, interfering with my school stuff because I would um, pass. I, that's how I ended up because um, biology is like art class. So I would pass those subjects that had diagrams a lot. And mm -hmm. people would tell my parents, like, um, you know, they would advise them to kind of push me towards an art school that I would be able to focus there, but they were not hearing it. So <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> um, yeah. later on, I, in my teens, uh, hip hop, the worst thing that can happen to my parents, uh, hip hop came along and I was like, okay, I went from, I want to be a comic book artist to, I want to be a hip hop cover album cover artist. And they were like, oh my God, we have to pay. <laughs> What's this wrong with this boy? What is going on now? <laughs> That's when they said, "Why don't you be a comic book artist?" <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so it got even worse. So um, from there, uh, I realized that oh, I finally realized what it's called, and I was like, oh, so these people are called illustrators. So that's what I want to do. I want to be an illustrator. So still, the war went on, and then eventually, I, uh, I wrote my aunt who was currently here to you know help me out like bring me back and um i came back and i actually did work for some hip-hop magazines and did some album covers as well cool and um then uh i started doing shows art shows group shows and mainly group shows just to get my name established and then I started doing solo shows. And then all, uh, every time people would see my work and say, do you do murals? And I would say, no, uh, I don't. I, I just, I'm, um, I only work on small scale. So there was an incident where 
I was kind of forced into it because a friend of mine was running a certain program and he was like, okay, th you have to do this, but here are the rules. It has to be aerosol paint. Uh, at least 90% of it has to be aerosol. And then, um, yeah, it has to be, it's going to be a mural and it has to be aerosol paint. And so those um, two, the first two murals that I did, they're still up. And they're probably some of the ugliest work. <laughs> <laughs> now I got to find them. <laughs> I'm not we, giving you the location. <laughs> we, we, we gather blackmail material here. So. <laughs> oh, we'll find it. Don't worry. Exactly. <laughs> Both of them are in my neighborhood where I live, too. Yeah. So from there, the Marvin Gaye was the next, was the step up. Because after those two, I was like, okay, I have to step my game up. And um, so, yeah, you, there, I became more known for the murals. And slowly but surely, people forgot that I, I'm an illustrator. So, mm -hmm. um, to this day, people still ask me, like, oh, you know, they, they say things like, oh, I didn't know you do, you know, illustration. <laughs> so, so, are you ready to, to hold up what you're working on? Yeah. So, this is so far what I'm drawing oh hang on a second uh, where are you there you, right. you guys are in trouble yeah so, Ooh. oh it's like action gorn it's action not just, gorn. yeah it's not like it's, like, it's not, not like slow moving, moving gorn. gorn yeah i wanted to <laughs> just switch him up a little bit because right. i saw some footage of him and he seemed nice. little... that's yeah. a, that's like the marvel uh version of uh <laughs> graham yeah. graham can we see yours Oh, he's aching oh, wow. already. I know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hang on. Hold on. Hold on. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, that is sick. Oh, my gosh. That's cool. You cheated. You started <laughs> long before. This, this is how out. you stay in the comic business for 40 years. You That's work right. fast. You work fast and you meet your deadlines. That's oh. right. Mm -hmm. I need to uh, read Queen Mickey's uh, comment in the chat. Right, if you dare. I use a projector to watch Star Wars. I use a broken TV that doesn't have a picture or audio to watch Star Trek. <laughs> Wait a minute, where where is that? Where the heck is that? That's up up about half a mile. Yeah. No. That's a horrible thing to say, Nikki. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can't find it, but Mickey, um, I want you to know. This is for you. So there you go. <laughs> <clears throat> Women now? Yeah, hey. I'm gonna say all I have to say to Mickey is respect. <laughs> We're hey Gary, geez, okay. No, this is for you. Yeah, <laughs> 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 <Damn. laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Uh... Hey, I'll tell you this. We had you know a lot of people tuned into Graham's show last week. Well, so you're in the minority. What? Yeah, yeah. Blue Boy Comics, uh uh the they, the broadcast is young. He he he, <laughs> he will be uh doing that. Okay. All right, we shall see. Um so did I see that you did a you had a gallery uh, showing? Yes, um, recently I had um, I at the series like the one behind me here with the woman holding the pencils. It's a series I call Return of the Shaolin Pencil. <laughs> it's, it's loosely based on uh, Joseph Campbell's The Hero with a Thousand Faces. Okay. So. Um, yeah, I, I just had a show, and uh, I just did a group show very recently called Umbrella that they do here in D.C. It's a bunch of uh, a lot of my art friends, and they usually put together these shows and it's like the art community here in D.C. So are, are these are these shows set up to sell the work, or is it more just to kind of show your work off and get your name out there more. Um, it's oh. both, it's both. So if you're at beginner 
level is to show kind of introduce yourself but if it's like um some of us that are more known mm -hmm. so the sales happen there now do you yeah, translate more? the translate what aaron is actually asking is as he wants to know if he can make money at, at it <laughs> <laughs> i've always wondered why comic book artists don't do um, murals because it's a very lucrative market and the style a lot of the style of the comic book artists would really be um cool to see in terms of like uh, large scale art if i get up higher than three feet on a ladder i get scared that's my problem <laughs> and you know what someone once told me seriously uh, this was uh, when my daughter was in dance uh, competition stuff when she was in high school. This other dad who was a little bit older than me said, you know what the number one killer of guys over 60 is? And I said, what? And he goes, falling off of ladders. So, mm -hmm. you know, of course, you said you use a lift, right? So that's probably a little yeah. bit safer. Okay, That's actually scarier than a ladder. Oh, <laughs> it depends on how high yeah. I am. Because... <laughs> The higher up you go, I, I did nine. The, I think the tallest I did was nine floors high. Woo! Oh, gee, man, the higher up you go, you. the lighter the basket gets. So the slightest wind sways it around. Mm. And when you come down, you have like this, um, what's it called? Um, motion sickness. You know, like you start, you feel wobbly. Oh, yeah. First few minutes when you come down from it. Some... Yeah. Um, Height freaks love that feeling. I don't. <laughs> I'm terrified of heights. And I'm not, yeah, I don't I'm like, not like it. I don't like it yeah, yeah, I'm not a height freak. So, <clears throat> uh, Craig Smith, the second for two dollars. Thank you. You will find it. Craig is in the description of this video. Uh, click on the more selection where the description of the video uh, underneath the, the um, screen there, and it will show you all the links to our campaigns, but it also has um, Ania Khan's um, uh, Instagram and website. I keep, the, every time I say your name, I feel like I'm butchering it and I don't want no, to. No, that's, yeah, that's perfect. You said okay. it. Ania Khan. Okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, Jack Elmy in the chat is saying Graham will have his, uh, his piece sold and shipped by the end of the stream. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> that is so true. I believe it. So, uh, Graham. Yes, sir. Let me, let me see if I can slow you down a little bit. Um, so, Good luck. I'm almost done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't slow down what's already done. <laughs> what was, I know you're a Star Trek fan, although, you know, we have had our differences about uh, Star Trek 2 and Star Trek 1, the right. movie. But oh, please tell us about that. Oh, shut up, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what made you think that uh, about doing this Star Trek show that uh, actually the second episode will be right after Graybeards? Right. Uh, what made me think of doing the show? Yeah. Well, I had done a Star Trek show um a couple weeks earlier uh just kind of like going over the writing of it and why it stood out and you know it was basically about the writing of the show and i got to thinking that you know it would be really cool to go over it episode by episode um and compare uh the the scripts that were the original scripts to what got filmed how it was changed how locations and names were changed because of um uh, or effects were changed, story elements because of the, the, the expense to make it. Um, and then, you know, then rate the episodes and all that kind of stuff. And I know there's a lot of Star Trek fans out there, particularly for the original series. And I thought, well, this is a cool way to do that. So um, it Gary's seemed to be very popular last week. So, yeah, Gary's not one of those fans, but that's OK. We're not relying on Gary to, uh, to help the show. So. No, I don't. I like the original Star Trek uh, series, um, but it's not something that uh, I'm trying to be diplomatic. <laughs> we can take it, Gary. We can take it. 
Um, yeah, I have a healthy view of it. Now, Ron, <laughs> Ron Garney might get pissed off and physically assault you, but get, Graham and I are not, you know, we won't do that. But I, I like it because it's it's goofy. What? Oh my it, God. It's like you, a lot of, you know, okay, Kirk's acting. There's one thing that, that's hilarious to me. We like to call that stylized, Gary. <laughs> Yeah, and if you actually look at the first season, you'll see a lot of nuance. You don't see all that. Nuance. Thing. Oh, yeah. I don't think he's Graham, bad. you yeah. might have, in the history of the English language, put Shatner's acting and nuance together in the same place. <laughs> <part. laughs> you need to watch my show. Yeah, Gary. So, yeah. Get ed- yeah. so you can get edumacated. That's maybe, right. Maybe I do. <laughs> And Icon watched it, and he doesn't even know what Star Trek is. It was right. that was the biggest fan. Yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, it was very interesting. I was really hooked because there you, see, um, look at that, Gary. It's, 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 it was very rich with a lot of history of Star Trek that I didn't know about um, before. So, so that's, that's what we're trying to do. See, I, I when I um, like a secret, com- well, a confession. I, when I was a kid, I remember I used to be terrified of Spock. For some reason, yeah, he scared the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way he looked, like you know, with the ears and how his eyes looked and his face because of the his emotionlessness. Mm-hmm. So he was very scary to me before, and then I started. Um, remember, as a kid, I, I drew him a lot too. Just for I used to get guys. detentions. In school, because I used to draw the Enterprise on the school desk, <laughs> <laughs> and and they would they, the teacher would come along and see me not paying attention and drawing you know the Enterprise fighting a Klingon battle cruiser <laughs> down the other side of the desk, and then oh, okay, no, then you're staying after school to wash desks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You know, those desks would be worth tens of dollars now. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I did a lot of drawing in school, but it was always on notebook paper. So when the teacher came by, I could just like close the notebook, you know? I didn't do it. on. I wasn't (laughs) brash enough to do it on the desk. Yeah, I do on my desk too. Yeah, I remember that. I used to uh, make sure I cleaned it off before I left class. (laughs) Not me. I had to get caught. Yeah, Graham. I was going to say, Graham apparently... (laughs) Wasn't a concern of his. All right. So Gary, you didn't you didn't like when you were a kid, you didn't watch Star Trek at all when it was on. I mean, wasn't that kind of the No, I did watch it, but it was it wasn't something he's measuring his words again. Yeah, it wasn't something that you know changed my life. Well, wait a minute. Well, you're older, so you were. How old were you, like in like '67? When, when did when did it first huh? come out? '66. Well, '67 it was cooking though. It was season two it was really cooking? I think. Uh, how old was I then? Um, Thirty. <laughs> <laughs> Bam. <laughs> Oh, Gary. Well, I was in elementary school when it was on, and and I had an uncle that was really into it, and and I couldn't understand why he loved it so much. You know, I so I would just watch it, and and, and it was entertaining. But that's a, I would rate it with some of the other science fiction shows like Time Tunnel and. Uh, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea and stuff like that. Um, to me, they're all equally entertaining. Well, at least he's giving us an inter- he's saying it's entertaining, uh, Graham, so he, we can, you know, I feel a little better. Yeah, no, I didn't dislike it. I, you know, it just didn't, it doesn't uh, matter anymore, Aaron. Gary's dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. Well, yeah, I can't dig myself out of this one. Yeah, I'll be right back. You can use all the effusive words you want. <laughs> Rest in peace, Gary. Rest in peace. <laughs> You're all rest in piss, Gary. Rest in piss. <laughs> See, my mom was totally into it. She loved Shatner. 
and she was totally into the show. So that's why we watched it all the time. And so that probably had a lot to do with it. Plus, I was I was just a wee lad, Gary. You were already, you know, driving a yeah, car. Yeah, I'd rather watch um Sonny and Cher. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> wow. Well, next I week. Gary, did, did, did you watch Combat at all? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Combat, all right. yeah. Combat all right. was awesome. That was a great show. Yep. All right, so now there, there's the awesome. saving grace with Graham. Wow. All right. Yeah, I, How about I have the rifleman. Uh, How about the rifleman. Yeah, rifleman. Yeah, okay. West. All I right. love westerns. Gary uh, has been resurrected in the season yeah. of Easter. <laughs> I've got uh, I've got the combat series uh, seasons on uh, DVD. Do you? I, yeah. I got a few of them. I I didn't buy the whole box set. I've been waiting for it to come out in Blu-ray. But I don't know if they're ever going to release it in Blu-ray. Yeah. People still use Blu-ray? <laughs> That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? He yeah, said, I'm waiting for it to come out on Betamax. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, what, 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 what do you use that's not Blu-ray? Uh, you mean like 5K? That, that type of thing? Or, or you mean every, streaming? Streaming. Everybody oh. stream buys this stuff now. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Uh, my wife does that. I don't. I, I still like, you know go through the old... Uh, CD or DVD collection and see what's there. I am done, Henry, boys. Sorry, Henry Jeremek is asking, uh, Ania Khan, are you going to put the knife in the Gorn's hand? Yes. Okay, see, I didn't know he had a knife. The yeah. question is, will he be merciful and quick? There That's it is. What want to know. There, there it is. is. I've started inking. Oh, oh, he's God. inking already, uh, Aaron. Destroyed. He's inking already. I sh oh my goodness! All and right, Graham's done. <laughs> now, Graham, how 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 soon? Is he signed it, Aaron. Wow! Wow! <laughs> Incredible. Well, okay, but wait a minute. In all fairness, this is a headshot. Okay, some of us are doing like full figure stuff. Uh, so. Yeah. Okay. Here no, no, experience. that's not true. This is the full figure of the Malkotian. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's his little tentacle. Oh yeah. Okay, you yeah. got me. All right, it's the full figure. You got me. You got me, dude. I can't how long help can him you, if he doesn't have legs. How long can you hang out, or do you have to take off now that you've? Uh... No, I can hang still. Okay. So, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna still Graham, are you gonna? Here. Are you gonna give that uh, Malcution a, a knife? <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't have any hands. Now I should give him a um, a Colt forty five because he made the boys go back into time. That's right. Uh, into a, w w old that would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. That would be awesome. You know that episode, Gary Specter of the Gun. You probably saw it a million times, right? Yep. <laughs> that's a good one. That's that's a good third season one. They're rare. I, I'm tempted to talk Star Trek. Okay, I'm going to do it because we won't get to the third season for a long time. But uh, see, I liked. I thought the Enterprise incident was pretty good. The first. That was, no, that wasn't the first. Was that the first episode of the third season, or the second? Is that the one with the Romulan? Yeah, with the chick that Spock, you know, pretends yeah. like. Hey, Aaron, way to box out everybody else on the stream. Yeah, well, that's, you know. Just trying to... <laughs> Is that the third or the second season? I'm trying, I am trying to keep Graham engaged. He's already okay, gone. Okay. Here's, Graham will appreciate this. Uh, Tashiro saying, I learned to cock my lever action Henry rifle with one hand watching Chuck Connors. Oh, well, I hope you got long arms <laughs> like he did. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I tried doing that once, almost knocked my teeth out. <laughs> didn't you oh, have you to know? have like, didn't you have the large handle to accommodate yeah. that? Check this out. Did they, uh, I don't know, oh, he's got it right there next to his drawing table. <laughs> wow. Do not mess with Graham. <laughs> It's Is that by, fine Connor? by Chuck yeah. Connors? Yep. Wow. Wow. Nice. That's the rifle. I had dinner with him once back in the 90s. At a, uh, what? We were at a convention I was going to say, where did you brandish that? <laughs> I, I, took it, I took it into the convention center. And Are you serious? Uh, oh, yeah. I had it I had it in a scabbard, and uh, security goes, uh, okay, take it out. And I did. And I broke the lever open to show him there was nothing in it and everything. And he says, is that real? I said, yeah. You have any bullets? I'm like, no. And he goes, well, I guess it's okay. This is pre-9-11 and everything, you know. 
So I walk up to Chuck and, and uh, he's signing some other stuff. And I go, boom. And I lay it down on his table. <laughs> he looks up at me and he goes, he goes, I don't think I've ever signed a real Winchester before. Well, so said, you're about to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was a cool dude, man. Real, uh, real conservative guy. I was, I was talking to him about, uh, um, the movie, the William Wyler movie, he did the big country, which had, uh, Charlton Heston in it. And, oh, yeah. uh, he, was, Gregory yeah, he, played a, he played a major jerk in, the, in that. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was Burl Ives, no account son. Yep. And, um, uh, so I said, what was it like? You know, what was what was it like with Heston? You know, he, he he's pretty conservative. Right. And uh, he, he looks at me and he goes, nah, he's he's not that conservative. I go, really? I said, well, what about the Duke? You know, John Wayne, because John Wayne gave him his first job. And he looks at me. He goes like, oh, Duke's the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> Duke's the real just deal. Speaking of John Wayne, somebody just posted. So, God, I can't remember what it was now. It just posted something about a movie that. Jo oh, uh, the John Wayne didn't like um, the Clint Eastwood movie. Um, oh, uh, the man with no name. But what was the name of the movie? The first one where he went. He was the dead sheriff come back to life, and he went and kind of got revenge on the town. Oh, that's that's not one of the spaghetti. That's westerns. not a that's spaghetti from, western. Uh, no, that's not a spaghetti western. That one was made. Uh, yeah, well, the one you're talking Clint about. Right um, high um, plains high, that's high it. High plains yeah, high plains drifter. Yeah. Anyway, they posted in this Facebook thing that John Wayne didn't like that movie, and I'm curious. You do you have any knowledge of that or what his problem? Because they didn't say why he didn't like it, like they always do, right? They post this stuff, and you're like, okay, why didn't he like it? He didn't like a lot of deconstructed westerns, uh, 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 and he he hated High Noon. Yeah, I know because what? Because Gary Cooper was looking for help instead of standing up to the exactly, uh, and, and he like, felt that the people in the town were un-American for not helping him, you yeah. know. And uh, so when he and Howard Hawks did uh, uh, Rio Bravo, they took the plot and they turned it on its ear. And in this time, everybody's trying to help him, and the sheriff turns him down because the sheriff's a professional and he doesn't want to get amateurs killed. Yeah. Uh, and he he felt that was the way it would have gone. Nice. Ah, see now, see now, the conversation's riveting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, done. I can entertain now. <laughs> well, let me. Uh, yeah. Well, let me bring up Shatner then, and uh, kill the, okay, uh, kill the momentum. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> you talk about the what was that Western series that Shatner was in? Oh, um, oh, uh. uh and he was like wore a bunch of disguises. Yeah, yep, yeah. yeah. Bar Bar uh, Barbary Coast. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barbary Coast. Boy, that was a piece of trash. It what? was. When it was, was that? awful. It was. That was pre-track, right? No, post. Like really? 1975, four. That must. Like it that. must not have lasted very long. One season. Yeah, I'd maybe. never heard of it until I was watching late night TV, and it and it popped up. I was like, what? <laughs> What's this? <laughs> Uh, I watched yeah. it when it came out because it had Shatner in it. I was like, well, I got to okay. see it. And you were disappointed. Yeah. He was trying to play that like Artemis character in, in uh, Wild Wild West. Exactly. I loved Wild Wild West, though. Yeah. Wild Wild West was great. Did um, did you guys, have you guys ever seen um, how the... Um, <laughs> The movie uh, that's in Esperanto that uh, Shatner was in. Oh, uh, the, the, the succubus or the incubus? One of those two is what something like that. Yeah, I know the was, one you're talking about. It's filmed in Esperanto. Yeah, like was, was that sort of amalgam language that was like halfway between uh, Spanish and English? Yeah, yeah. It was like popular for about a year and a half in the late '70s, and they thought this is the way to go. We'll be able to bridge the. English Spanish language by creating Esperanto. <laughs> and like, they, they shot the whole thing in Esperanto, and he's like, you know, seeing Shatner going, Hola, que tal, como esta? You know, it was like, it was like, it was like Spanish American gibberish, and it was this horror film, kind of. Oh my gosh, it's classic, classic good stuff. See, Gary, that's you got to go search this stuff out on YouTube. How about really the Devil's YouTube? Rain? Oh my! Well, he didn't have a big part in that, though, did he? He was just kind of a, a, a 
not an extra, but he was like a, a a supporting role in that movie, wasn't he? Well, yeah, but he 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 opened up the movie and everything, and you followed that character all the way through. Um, uh, Tom Skerritt, I guess, would you would say was like the the hero character in it, but um, uh, well, what was the one with uh, Ernest Borgnine that melted at the end? That was that's, the it. that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Devil's Graham, <clears throat> Graham, yes, sir. are you drawing a second piece? No, I'm just noodling on this oh, okay. one. <laughs> I was going to say, you've already humiliated everyone else. And you just like, do another one. <laughs> uh, he's just rubbing it a little bit, Graham. That's all right. <laughs> now, did you guys, speaking of, uh, there was a really big kick in the 70s for like a, a satanic you know, a bad guy films. Like, I guess probably the Omen probably kicked it off or not the Omen, but the exorcist the exorcist. Right. But what was that one where Peter, Peter Fonda and a uh, Warren Oates, they're in mo uh, motor homes and they go to this park where they're, they're going to camp and there's this satanic ritual and they see this woman getting sacrificed. And then the, the Satan worshipers see that they saw him. And so there's this high speed chase and they're run, run in motor homes trying to get away. <laughs> these, these, uh, and it's kind of like uh, did you, you know, say high speed chase in motorhomes well that yeah exactly <laughs> just uh, like that they was, speed up the camera that was what was that called I mean was every that, 70s movies had a high speed chase that was true. the special yeah. effect <laughs> it's like, uh, taking the the uh, corners at speed and the hubcaps uh, popping yeah, off there it is yeah. race race with the devil that's the okay, one okay I, I, I think I saw that. I don't remember anything about it, but that made me very cool. He was cool, you know? Uh, Queen Mickey, that's artwork that I um, have put up on Comic Art Fans. We talked about it earlier in the broadcast. When you were slagging Star Trek. That's right. <laughs> Not paying attention to what's uh, going on. Eyes of the Hydra wants to know what David is inking with. Um... Uh, sweat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get this straight. Let me get this straight. Let's clarify, David. Are you saying you... Never mind. <laughs> There's no way I could ask that question without yeah. sounding racist. <laughs> did, did, did you see that uh, Little Rascals episode? Yeah, or? that's what I was saying. <laughs> Stymie wipes his sweat and throws it on the wall as all this blackness just... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. See, that's why we have David on the show, because he can say that and not get in trouble. Oh, man. That's funny. Do you remember the one where there was the... Um... The the born the man from Borneo. Borneo, that was one of the yes. best ones. David yum, yum, watched that. Yum yum eat him up. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yum yum eat him up. <laughs> I like when they bake the birthday cake, you know, it's that square cake and it's like throbbing on the sides. That's the one. That's the one where uh Stanley, uh throws his black sweat. The, the reason Oh, why that's right. That's right. Because <laughs> it, it said on the box, uh, sit on stove and stir till it's done. So he oh. literally sits on the stove <laughs> and he's heating up and sweating and he wipes the sweat and then throws it onto the wall and you see this spray of black sweat just go, oh, oh my God. It kills me every time. I'm like, man, these people are so racist. It was hilarious. <laughs> I mean, when you know, it's that, funny, that's it's not funny. a thing to hear often. They're so racist, they're hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you got to give it up to them. And I say, you know what? That's that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll, t we'll take that one on the chin. That was good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, folks, thanks for joining us. We've, yeah. just, <laughs> we've just been okay. demonetized. They just flagged the channel. channel. Change the subject a little bit. Um, there's a bakery near where I live. And it's kind of off the side of the road, you know, like it's pushed back, like 
60, 70 yards from the street front. And I passed by it literally hundreds of times. And I'm, you know, I'm a card carrying American. I, I love baked goods as much as any man. And so every single time I pass by, I think, you know, I got to stop there sometime. It's, you know, not convenient, but I have to stop there. So the other day I finally pulled off and it's just like this little house that was turned into a bakery. Walked in, it was very quaint. There wasn't a lot of uh, choices, uh, baked goods, but it was still, you know, kind of appealing. No one was in in it no one was behind the counter so you know after a few seconds this woman comes out and she is bedecked with tattoos mm. from from head to toe and of course she's got the accompanying you know piercings all over her face and you know all this stuff and this the same chick that sold you the corn dog <laughs> No, that was a normal looking woman. Okay, all right. I'm a little confused. That's all right. So I'm trying to decide what to get. And so I asked her, uh, you know, what, what's good today? And she says, oh, I highly recommend these um, raspberry danishes. And she points to it. And I noticed like on her inside of her forearm, real large numbers covering her forearm 666 oh, <laughs> oh my God. that's when i realized i was in satan's bakery <laughs> oh, man. so i decided to pass up what she was recommending and get something else and i ended up um just getting like a chocolate chip cookie and then i i got out of there yeah but um <laughs> I have to admit the uh, the demon cookie tasted pretty good. <laughs> so, you got to deal with the devil to make the best uh, uh, bread products in town, and well, yeah, you know, yeah, that's right. What are you gonna do? Oh, by the way, we couldn't hear it. Still oh. didn't work. Dude, you have to get the trombone out or whatever you played the other day. Yeah, that's we for that's for uh, the big ones. Yeah. yeah, Jimmy for two dollars. Thank you, Jimmy. Appreciate it very much. He says, "Hey guys, Ghost of Matakumba Key is great." He's directing that at our Graham, Mr. Graham Nolan up there. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that very much, Jimmy. Absolutely. Um, Jen X Catholic wants to know, Gary, was it worth your eternal soul? <laughs> 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 They're never gonna let you live it down. Yeah, I passed the, the, the uh, you ate Satan's cookies. I know. <laughs> it's like the first corn dogs and now the devil's uh, bakery. Wow, that's the kind of uh, that's the kind of stuff you get on this show only. So, is that uh, is that Godzilla movie coming out this week? Who cares? <laughs> ah, see? Yeah, Graham, you don't like Godzilla either, do you? No, I love Godzilla. I love uh, oh. Godzilla minus one, but these American ones suck donkey. Well, this yeah. is uh yeah, well, this is like Godzilla versus Kong, right? Yeah. I'm yeah. sure this they're, will be a classic. They're posing like they're coming out of Compton, too. You know, the the, the two <laughs> you know. I mean, give me a freaking break. <laughs> So I'm guessing you put some thought into this. Oh, <laughs> they're all. Oh, it's just I hate it. I can't. Well, stand wait it. a minute. What, doesn't he have like Thanos's glove on or something? Right. They're going the superhero route. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, four. I mean, not four. Kong. <laughs> Kong has his own Molnir. You know, he's got he's got a <laughs> hammer of power. Right. Give me a break. <laughs> it's not uh, here. <laughs> I want to go see this thing. Thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. King Kong's not strong enough. We we have to augment his his power. Give him the hammer of Thor. Well, you know, they've uh, they got to keep it fresh. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Is that uh, following this 
the American series of Godzilla and Kong. Is that anything to do with those films, or is it? I believe so. It's like the sequel to that, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, it's they've they're all connected. There's Godzilla, okay. then Godzilla King of the Monsters, then Godzilla versus Kong, and now whatever this one's called. <laughs> He's a whatever the uh, King Kong (laughs) out of thunder. Godzilla straight out of Compton. (laughs) Godzilla out of Compton. (laughs) That's what it is. Uh, Godzilla two electric boogaloo. (laughs) Godzilla two electric boogaloo. (laughs) (laughs) What the heck was that? (laughs) (laughs) I don't even want to know. I don't either. H is for Heretic for $2. Thank you very much. How do you guys feel about uh, Tales of Suspense books and comics? I think he means means original series. I think he's talking about Star Trek. Well, I'm thinking Tales of Suspense, man. I love Tales of Suspense. Iron Man, Captain America. you You get two stories. Yeah, but he comic? said books, books and comics. So there's no I tales. know, but I want to talk about Tales of Suspense. Uh, right. No, how does Tales of TOS stands for Star Trek? Is that the tales original of series? Space? The original series. How do we guys feel? Series. I don't know, Graham. Did you ever read any of the novelizations? Uh, just the James Blish ones. You know, when they came out with those, um, the ones that he uh, based the stories on the scripts. Um, they're kind of short stories. They're pretty fun. They're different because you know a lot of them he wrote before they actually came out. This <laughs> 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 um, You know the great thing about one of those James Bliss books is it, might, it must have been the first one. It has a nice James Bama cover. Yeah, on the the one that has the Kirk's head and then the yeah. Um, that's a nice cover. Yeah, so don't disrespect James Bama, Gary. Actually, Aaron. I would like to see that. Could you? Do you have a? Actually, um, I can knows. find it. I'm not drawing. I can find it. <laughs> yeah, would you, Graham? Go Thank for you. It. Yeah. Go for it. Gary was yeah. trying to get me off topic again here, and it's <laughs> be... that's something that we do here is stall Aaron. Well, it doesn't take much. <clears throat> that's for sure. Oh, so they're tag teaming. I know, Aaron. But Graham's helping me out, man. Graham. Well, Graham is uh, looking. Uh, Nia Khan, can you? Can you show us your progress so far? Um, oh, dang. Oh, wait a minute. Let me make you big here. Let's take a look at that. Uh, where are you? There you are. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Oh, look at that wow. shadow. Open. Nice. So long. Dang it. Very nice. Very nice. I'm glad to see that some people on this show are progressing. <laughs> Very nice. Well, I guess, I guess David's inking too, isn't he? And some of us are going backward. I am so <laughs> far behind right now. I can't even start laying the uh, heavy shading in here. Uh, Aaron, could you yeah. read uh, Mickey's uh, chat, please? Must I? <clears throat> Where are we at? Mickey. Um, Mickey says, how did you guys feel when Star Trek, the original series, was canceled due to low ratings? Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> Mickey... <laughs> Dang, Mickey's I don't like think taking anybody's ever got double whammied in. Oh my gosh, I she's she's, she's <laughs> literally begging for it at this point. So. Uh, okay, you can, I, you can share my screen, Aaron. I got the the Bama okay, picture. There you go. There you go, Gary. Tell me that's not. Oh on. wow. Okay, I've seen that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I, that's nice. I've never See, seen if, that. If only the show was that awesome. I know, right? <laughs> Oh my gosh! But you know what? Look at—they've got like rockets coming out of the 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 shuttle shuttle bay door, and rockets coming out of the nacelles too. <laughs> yeah. But it looks cool. Are it you saying cool. that? Are you saying that James Bama didn't really watch the show? <laughs> I think I think James. Yeah. Well, I think he painted this thing before it aired. Yeah, you might be right. Look at the collar on T- Kirk. That's yeah. uh, that's uh, the. Uh, that's the That's pilot. Well, what's going on in the background, like underneath the ship? It's like, are they arguing on the bridge? Is that a is that an action scene? Well, that dude's got a knife, doesn't he? Uh, no one looks that? worried though. Yeah, Kirk no, is. He doesn't have a knife. What is? I think. That? He, oh no, he's got that. Um, 
Well, it's I think it was a shock absorber, but um, it was supposed to be that uh, that piece of the machine. Yeah, that's what it is. Is that piece of machinery that burnt out, you know, and they had to recharge it to get their engines going in, in uh, where no man's gone before. But well, the prop, is- <laughs> the prop is a, is a, well, no, a shock no, absorber. The episode, <laughs> dude. If you if you're right, if you look at the the characters on this, and this this is he. That's what he used for reference. Where no man has gone before. The pilot. Yeah. Or the yeah. second pilot. Yeah, because that's, that's Kelso. That's yeah. Kelso talking there about before the uh, the wire came and strangled him. Yeah, come on, Gary, that's, you remember that, right? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> that Spock face looks like a Neil Adams drawing. Yeah, it does. That Spock face is is amazing. Yeah, it's cool. Well, you know, Shatner is the hardest guy to get a likeness of. I don't know what it is, but that he that he nailed that man. Yeah, that he was, did. Yeah, perfect. What's the what's the that factory next to Shatner's face? Uh, that's the mining plant that where they go down to uh, Delta Vega. The the uh, <laughs> I just watched it today because we're doing it in in half an hour. <laughs> the, the proper answer was who gives a sh- <laughs> <laughs> Well, the real answer is a beautiful Michael Whitlock uh, matte painting. <laughs> There you go. Okay, there you go. That is an amazing piece. I mean, it it it's it's bait and switch though, because the the series is isn't that exciting. Oh, see, I yes, it is. I disagree. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, it is. (laughs) Oh man, they just they just don't. Uh, Graham, they just don't get it. You know, I mean, what do you, what do you do? Yeah, I know, I know. If he said this stuff back home in his mother Russia, they'd have him in a uh, gulag. <laughs> <laughs> Damn commie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now that's, uh, I actually, I went and found this paperback because I'd like, um, I collect all of Bama's Doc Savage covers, and then I saw this, and I was like, oh, I got to get that. I would never saw that before. That's so Have you, you know seen? My, my one complaint of his Doc Savage covers is is that he was too faithful to uh, uh, Steve Holland's physique. Yes, um, I would agree you know, with that. He, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't bump him up, you know, make him look bigger and stronger. So he looks like a 45-year-old fit dude, you know, but – you know, he doesn't look like the man of bronze, you know, in a no. lot of his paintings, you know, he, he could have added more beef to him. Well, you mm. know, the funny thing is there's, I got one, um, you know, that series of uh, prints that graffiti did. Yeah. Um, the, I think it's, I want to say it's a uh, uh, red snow, I think, but no, not yeah. red snow. Uh, um, maybe well, anyone, anyway, it had a, like a three quarter shot of um, Doc Savage and it was one of the ones where he sort of beefed him up. And I remember yeah. reading a commentary on it. And he said that, oh, yeah, he, he made his hands larger and made his arms a little bit longer. And you could tell that he would beefed him up. But so many of them are, like you said, he almost looks like this fit but sort of emaciated middle-aged guy. Yeah. Yeah, like, all the lines on his face and everything. Yeah. But so when, he, when he left, when Bama left the books, a guy named Pfeiffer came in. And he, he I did. love Pfeiffer's stuff. Oh, Do you like it? But- the, the 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 kingmaker is my yes. favorite Doc Savage cover. He's sitting on a throne, like this yep. marble throne, and he's sitting there like this, like like he's thinking, and he looks so massive. He's got these gigantic forearms, and, he, and his shirt is all torn. I love that cover. Would it be asking a guest to actually work to to bring that image up? I'd lo- I'd love. To I'm see. I'm getting it right now. I'm way ahead okay. of you. Okay. Because I don't know. I'm not familiar with that name. He uh, he had this very sort of stylized the way he laid his paint down. It yeah. was it was kind of I don't know. I don't want to say blocky, but it was really interesting. And uh, here it is, right here. You got um, it. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh wait a minute! I'm, I I was I thought I was sharing that picture of Bama, but you were. So I just need you're to trying to pull it down. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to pull it down. I go, why isn't it going away? And he's like, oh, it's because it's all right. Here we go. There it is. Wow, yeah. isn't that a great? Uh, look at, look, uh, look at his arm. I have not not seen this before. 
Yeah, this is uh, uh, Paul Pfeiffer. I did a I did a thing. Um, I do a little thing on my Sunday show called "Who's This Guy?" and I like try to bring up artists that maybe people have not are not fully aware of. And I just loved his stuff. Fred Pfeiffer. Oh, Fred Pfeiffer. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. You're, that's right. Yeah. Something like that. I'm an expert on it, obviously. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Pfeiffer, what are you going to name your kid? Fred. <laughs> <laughs> well, his name is right there. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, right I guess there. it is. Fred Maybe Pfeiffer. I should pay attention. <laughs> Maybe I should pay attention, right? That is, yeah, it reminds me of, of uh, Loki. Yeah, the Buscema a splash page, right? Yeah. All right, here's this one is a little bit. This is you can actually see the style a little bit more um, and how he lays his paint down on this one here. As I should be drawing, but uh, I can't help myself. Uh, it's see. your show. You can do what you want. That's right. And I'll cry if I want to. Something like that. Here we go. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. The spider looks it. like it was like a rubber spider hanging there, though. <laughs> yeah, but <clears throat> look at the, if you look at the, um, like these sort of blocks of, you know, yeah, paint that are there creating the highlights and how he did the shirt and everything. It's all very sort of um, simple shapes, but he just brings it together so well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really like that. Yeah. I like how he lit the character too. Yes. Very dramatic. Yeah, he obs he uh, he absolutely knew uh what he was doing. Now he it you reminds know, he me of uh NC White. I can see that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can see that. I had to look at it for a minute. A painting style. Yeah, it's very chunky. It's not like super slick like yeah, it's almost Right. Almost uh, impressionistic. Yeah. And I, I love that when guys paint and you can actually kind of, you can see the medium. You know what I mean? It's, you're not trying to recreate a photograph, but you're trying to, you know. Yeah. Create, yeah, exactly. Create some texture and, and let the, let, let everybody know, yeah, this is, you know, this is a painting. It's, it's a representation. It's not, you know, I'm not trying to recreate a photograph because really if you're recreating photographs, then it's like, why don't I just take a photograph? And that's exactly. not to, that's not to disparage Bama because I love Bama's stuff, but it, at some point it gets a little stiff. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you lose some of that, um, you know, the the art aspect of it. Yeah, he never did an action pose uh, cover either. There were always like poses. Yeah, very know, stoic stuff looking. that was going to happen, and most of them were monochromatic too. Right, that was always interesting to me, though. I thought. Um, you know, getting the value separation. You, I mean, I guess it's easier because you're basically just doing a value painting, but um, I always thought that was kind of cool that he did that. Yeah. Um, well, they sold the shit out of those books from yeah. those covers the same yeah. way they sold all the Conan books because of Frazetta's covers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the, just, the Frazetta cover, uh, Conan covers is what got me into, into comics. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, Aaron, what's the time situation the time situation is we're at 4 36 so we're about just about 20 minutes from wrapping up uh graham if you need to bolt yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna take off but before i go i'll just show you my final after i noodle it up a little bit okay hang on here here we go there's graham's uh wow Malcotian. very nice look at that malcotian the malcotian <laughs> So that's a yeah. That's actually scary. I mean, I <laughs> I never would have guessed that was a, a Star Trek episode. Yeah, he, he, yeah, Gary. He was scary. The character scared me. I thought he was kind of cool. Yeah, like a, they didn't like show him very much, but he was cool. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I want more of that character. Yeah, and that other one, the the one on the uh, that was kind of made out of lava, um, f from the Abraham Lincoln one. Um, yeah, that one was kind of cool too. Yeah, there was a few that, that creeped me out when I was a little kid, but uh, I kept. Hey, nobody out. did the Horda. I was surprised. I was surprised you didn't do the Horda. I, you know, the great thing about the Horda was they reminded me of those lunch pizzas we used to get on Friday. Yes, yes. At school, and uh, that's why it was my one of my favorite episodes. I'd watch it and then I'd go, "Man, I'm hungry." 
<laughs> I figured it'd be too easy, Graham, and then here I am uh, struggling to finish as as per usual because uh, I get distracted. But uh, anyway, Graham, thank you so much for joining us and taking some time. I knew yeah. you'd get a kick out of this. So um, I, I appreciate the invite, bud. Uh, it was great so having great you on. hanging out with you guys and uh, Aniacon. It was so nice to meet you. Likewise. Likewise. And uh, everybody, when you're done with this show, go over to the landing party. We're going to talk more Star Trek over there. That's right. So thanks, Graham. Okay. Thanks, we'll guys. See, right. see ya. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Graham. All right. Now you can't quote <laughs> Graham anymore. Yeah, get that nerd out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. I see how it is. You guys got me. Well, I was interviewing, and uh, that, uh, you know, that slows me down a little bit, although it, it didn't. I didn't seem to slow down the Neocon, so uh, I guess. <laughs> I got two characters though, so I always have built-in excuses. You notice that? Mm -hmm. I you do rarely do drawings with just one character. Well, you get these ideas and you think, "Oh yeah, that'll be easy." I'll just, you know, and then it's like suddenly, "What was I thinking?" This uh, Gorn character, his outfit—I think it was between like leopard skin and a pepperoni pizza. <laughs> <laughs> It was kind of like a little Tarzan outfit, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, who, who made this? Who was in charge of this design? Well, you know, the budget uh, has to be a... Here's a little interesting Star Trek fact that I know Gary can't wait to hear. Um, they well, hold on a second. You already qualified it as being interesting. <laughs> no, no, no. This is. <clears throat> they spent on the first pilot for that series by today's money standard... Six million dollars. What? That's crazy. So spending that kind of money back in 1966 on a pilot? That's unheard Is of. Is that how you get a, a pilot okayed by I, I don't know making how... them think that every show is gonna be like that? Well, I I, I don't think it would have uh, impressed anybody if you told them every show is gonna cost six million. Yeah, I guess that's true. They'd have to uh, declare how much it costs. <laughs> well, what I now you guys probably have heard the rumor that, or not the rumor, but the story that Lucille Ball actually greenlit Star Trek, right? What? Because it was no, at it was at Desi Lu Studios, and uh, she's the one who greenlit the series. But <laughs> apparently, the truth is, when they told her they were doing, they wanted to do the show called Star Trek, she thought it was going to be like a variety show that had a bunch of stars coming out. And <laughs> that's not that's okay. Really? Yeah. Wow. She thought it was going to be a, a variety entertainment show. Yes. Star Trek. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. I like that name. Yeah, <laughs> great. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> it was because she wanted like, to guest star on it. She's like, where's Bob Hope? What is this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Phyllis Diller. Yeah, where's Phyllis Diller at? You guys had a chance to see Phyllis Diller uh, for Mad Monster Party, but you didn't pick it. So yeah. I kind of feel bad for Atlas Comics because I, I kind of wouldn't mind doing Atlas Comics too. But that's, uh, that's what I voted for. Well, I know you wouldn't vote for Star Trek. Obviously, you have like, you know, animosity towards the whole franchise. <laughs> I have no idea. So by saying I'm not crazy about it, you interpret that as <laughs> that I hate it. All I know is you've been making fun of me and Graham all day. So that's what that's what I'm thinking. Well, I if it hadn't have been Star Trek, I would have, you know, picked something else. Well, to make fun true. of. I mean, you you probably are. You're probably grumpier than I am, which and that takes a lot. <clears throat> Look at you, you you know, Ania Khan is all upset because he's becoming a Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Got me drawing this rubbish. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> see, see what you've done. 
You've insulted both our guests. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go Nigerian. What if I, that's how I actually talk? <laughs> I did not come to this show to draw Star Trek. <laughs> oh, these people. <laughs> oh man, we're not gonna have any friends in this show. <laughs> Very good friend with everybody. Oh, what's you awesome? gotta say that clip. <laughs> I've been calling this rubbish. <laughs> well, you know oh, somebody's man. gonna clip it. So, oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> You got me weeping. <laughs> you got me weeping too, but for good reason. I, I uh, Zeno, the stoic, says the picture of the girl on the hover Vespa looks cool. I'm like, what? Oh, that's uh, Catwoman, right? Catwoman, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yvonne Craig. Thank you. Thank you. The Vespa, so that's like, oh. oh, okay. Oh, back there. I see. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Jack Elmy says, I'd like to see a Star Trek Batman 66 crossover. Ooh, now that's a David. And, the, and then he says, I know Aaron would too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he was right. All right, so I gotta I gotta ask a couple more questions here of our guest. Um, so when you're uh, when you did this gallery show, was this existing work you already had, or did you create new pieces specifically for the show? Um, I create new pieces for the show. Wow! So how like how many pieces did you do? New pieces. I did um, seventeen. Holy what? And they were all framed. Um, yeah, watercolor, mixed media. And some of them were some of this um, material. Any wow. uh, Star Trek pictures in there? Oh, you? yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, how long, how long did it take you to get all those pieces done for the show? How much time were you given to kind of prepare okay. for that? It was, it spanned over, I think I took uh, about, it had to be at least eight months. Because wow. I was, I would, um, I would work on them when I would come back from, say, doing commercial stuff like the mural stuff. And so you're doing this in your spare time. You're doing 17 paintings over eight months in your spare time for a gallery. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So the funny thing is, um, I, I you realize quick. Um, people don't know what artists really do. Like all this stuff we're doing right now, it looks like we're just doodling around and sure does. Around. So, <laughs> so uh, people will see the artwork and go, wait, it costs how much? <laughs> yeah. I, I saw you draw that on Graybeards, man. That's not worth more than 25. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's uh, very interesting to see like the sometimes the reactions or things like that. My favorite is when you know if it's a group of people and they'll like people are going through the line like, oh, what do you do? What do you do? So this person says, oh, I'm a doctor, and this other person, I'm an engineer or something like that. And then the one person that goes, oh, I'm an artist, they go, oh. My six-year-old is an artist. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> My yeah. unborn child likes to draw. <laughs> I used to take it as a dig, but I just, you know, it's just part of the whole thing where people, a lot of people don't really know what, how artists make a living or if it's, if there's even a market for the stuff that we do. I'll get What's some, like sometimes the opposite where, if I mentioned that I work for Marvel in DC to the lay person, mm -hmm. they assume I'm rich. <laughs> I'm like, are you crazy? Yeah. I know. Yeah, that's the other. <laughs> well, you get that, you yeah. that, used to get that yeah. question all the time, right? Are you famous? And I'm like, I always yeah. say, it depends on who you talk to, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And that's very true. Yeah, fine fame. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's, it's such a miss uh, understanding. Like I, I've done murals for uh, Facebook's um, data centers in Ashburn and in Richmond. So every time I, when I say that, people think I'm literally sitting down talking to Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you, you, you did stuff for Facebook? You know, and it's like, yeah, they're a data center, not Zuckerberg himself. <laughs> Zuckerberg calls me up. We had lunch. And- <laughs> exactly. <laughs> do you have an agent or do you rep yourself? No, I rep myself. Is it, uh, do you think that's more difficult to line up work or not? It's, it's not um, it, it, like um, it's just about like I, how I got into doing the group shows was I went out to group shows and you meet the um, curators and you have to have a body of work uh, sure. before you do that. So you can sometimes um, at the group, sh- the group shows are much better to do that, not the solo shows, because the solo shows would, it, it would be kind of corny to, you know, <laughs> give out your business card at some point. Yeah, yeah. Look or, at my stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> so the group shows is how I, um, you know, I get you make contact with curators, and then sometimes the curators will keep you in mind for future shows. And then it's also sometimes friends are the curators, so they'll just naturally call you in, like, "Hey, there's this thing going on. Uh, if you have some pieces to put in." The danger in that is that if you do too many group shows. Um, you're going to, your pieces become familiar. So people mm-hmm. are like, oh, I saw that piece, you know, or whatever, you know. So that's why I try to make new pieces every show. Well, when you have like extra shows that are extra, pardon me, extra pieces that, you know, didn't sell, uh, do you market them some other way or do you just kind of sit on them for a while? Um, yeah, I, I do. Um when the pieces don't sell, so eventually what happens is they have to go on sale. So in, if there's, that's where the group shows come in. So if I did a solo show, the pieces that remain, I put them in the group show for um, at a sales price. Okay. And that's how I get them off my hands, at least most of them. The rest of them, I just uh, throw them away. You what? do not. I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Throw them my way. Throw them away. Throw them my way. Jeez. Scary. I would actually, I would like to do a trade. Uh, David, you know, we're still, I'm still waiting. <laughs> oh, it's going to happen. Yeah, okay. Oh, so you want to trade with David, but not me. I still yeah. I'll trade, I'll trade with all of you. Uh, that's okay. I get it. That's fine. <laughs> Because uh, I was I was trying to buy uh, when I first started watching your show, I saw um, that you guys were doing an auction. Yes. But I kept getting kicked off the <laughs> the thing because <laughs> each time I would uh, uh, you know I would try to claim someone else beat me to it. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna beat everybody to it and just contact the people. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I will get a piece from all of you, you know, because yeah. um, I, I love the show. I love the. Oh man, that's awesome! I love the work, you know, everything. And that's hey, why how I did you come across the show? Did did it just? It was random. So um, and the funny thing was the format of this show. Um, it's it's almost like uh, watch like if it could be like a TV show, you know, and what really caught my attention was the bombs that Aaron, <laughs> the, the bombs. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it was the way that it was done, you know, and everybody picking on Gary and <laughs> you need everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's Gary picking on everybody else is what, uh... oh, right. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. People be like Gary went. To the, Gary was there when they wrote the Ten Commandments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You found humor in that? 
<laughs> I'm liking this guy better every minute. And Super then sometimes Aaron. people would be like, oh, Aaron is scared to do this and that. And he's like, you know what else? Okay. <laughs> That's the bomb thing. <laughs> uh, Chad, do me a favor. Make an Eocon feel at home and insult him. <laughs> yes, right? <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh, goodness. that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, so I found out about the show, and it's been, you know, I've been trying to catch it as much as I can. Um, you know, and it's it's all around because there's the educational part of it, you know, uh, aka the nerdy part, <laughs> the, the entertaining part. The corn dog story was just, I don't know how that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. I, I don't think that was one of I was like, okay, okay, you're yeah. following. And next thing you know, the entire. <laughs> the... That's what they chose to latch on to. <laughs> it's, the, it's the simple things in life, Gary. But, uh... <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, They're I asking you in the chat if you have a website. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, just it's... the chat. It's uh, it's a uh, neocon uh, Udofia .com, right? And yeah, you guys yeah. look in the 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 uh, the link is in the description of this video for his Instagram and his website. So those links will take you right there. Uh, we've got over four hundred people watching right now. I'd appreciate you guys to hit the like and subscribe. Obviously, this show is worth your attention. So uh, we'd appreciate it if you'd help us grow. Thank you very much for that. Son of Liberty Radio for $5. It says bombs. Aaron bombs all the time. <laughs> <laughs> face it. He's so David Williams. Oh, my gosh. All right. I've had enough of this. That's it. Takes care of Son of Liberty Radio. Wow. Guys. Golly. Yeah. Scorched earth, baby. Yeah, there's no... <laughs> Yeah, there's no coming back from that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Great. So I assume you have a in-home studio or you have a place you go and work? No, I work out of my um, apartment. I have a studio in here. I, I as well a space that I made a studio. Very nice. Yeah. Now it's super expensive to live in DC, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, speaking of studios, they have a lot of those studios here, but it's so expensive. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it's super expensive. And, uh, yeah, and especially in this uh, line of business, you don't want to take do that you, risk. Do you, uh, would you be able to move someplace out of the city, you know, and still get the, the work? Or does it your work really depend on you being accessible in the DC, uh, right in DC. No, I've done work outside of DC, um, and unless like digital stuff, because I I've done work for uh, what is it called? Wizards of the Coast, also. Oh, really? Yeah. So, um, yeah, that that's where I because I have the Cintiq, the big Cintiq thing. So that one, work like that is where I have to be home. You know. Um, in the studio but uh, other than that everything else i usually work um remote which is fun sweet yeah i don't know i mean um <clears throat> you're still relatively young right i mean how old are you if you don't mind me asking um 49 you lie you are not no i was born 75 i am 49 wow we thought you were like in your 30s yeah. <laughs> like, you're all you actually are almost old enough to be on this show <laughs> oh you got some gray in your beard let me see a little bit see <laughs> oh look at you okay. does. Look at that. Okay. you are honorary then <laughs> all right nice. well i was gonna say because it's like when i was younger it's like all i wanted to do was live in new york and you know be in big city and now that i'm older it's like all i want to do is get out of it and, yeah you know <laughs> When I was looking for illustration jobs, um, early 2000s, it, I, New York was like my spirit animal because the energy and everything and, you know, being a diehard hip hop head, I'm like, oh, this is hip hop mecca, you know, and now it's like the furthest thing I want to, like, I was <laughs> <been> quiet. <laughs> I never thought that would be my MO. 
No. Yeah, it's like you kids keep it down out there. I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> Well, I actually thought you were young, not because I knew what you looked like or anything like that. Is your artwork has like such a youthful spirit to it, and it's like, yeah, that's, it does you yeah. know very contemporary and ahead of the curve, and just that yeah. energy and stuff like that. So that's what made me assume wow. that you were like really. Young Thank person. you. And that's good. So keep maintain that yeah. um, your <laughs> art you. as long as you can. Yeah, don't don't become old and crotchety like Gary, where you know you yeah, know, right? <laughs> doesn't want to learn nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Always watching the clock. When's the show over? I got to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have I ever uttered those words? When is this show over? <laughs> well, that's what you're hinting at. How much time we got left? How much time yeah. we got left? I'm doing that for. The artists who oh, that want to know how much time they have left. Mm -hmm. Okay, David, don't you find that helpful? <clears throat> no, <laughs> <laughs> actually, <laughs> no. Oh, <Gary. laughs> stresses me the hell out. <laughs> Every time you bring it up, it tenses up my back. <laughs> <laughs> And then now Gary is going to be like, I yeah, did not come here for this rubbish. Yeah. Uh, chat, <laughs> chat, don't you find it helpful when I ask how much time there is left? <laughs> <laughs> don't uh, help Gary. <laughs> the creative face says Gary checks his, the clock because he needs to change his diaper. Oh, oh my goodness. That's <laughs> rough right there. Savage. <laughs> <laughs> But if you do, Gary, go ahead. You won't let you do it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Did you just make some sort of noise again that I didn't hear? Yeah, that one's not very loud. Let's see. Look, what do I have to choose from? Now look yeah, at Brian. Like Brian Norton in Japan, he obviously has a problem. He says, I never want the show to end. <laughs> it's just so nice. Uh Oh, is this? He's a monster. Says, I stopped listening to Gary after he said something about the devil's cookie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I lost respect. Oh, well. no, you, were like, you did not people. have to eat it, but you ate it anyway. No, I ate it anyway. <laughs> well, she didn't recommend it. That's why, you know. Oh, I see. Say. Well, okay. So you, I got you. Oh boy! <laughs> she didn't tell you it had uh, Puff Daddy uh, chips in it. <laughs> oh, I was gonna ask you, Gary. I wouldn't have known then. I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have known then. Is it one of those special bakeries where they have uh, infused <laughs> brownies or something? Oh, yeah. No. Well, this is. This is uh, Vancouver, uh, Portland area. They they have those uh, bakeries around here. Yeah, yeah there's plenty of infusion going around around this. <laughs> Holy smokes! Actually, I don't. Are do you actually go downtown at all, Gary? No, I haven't been down there in years. Yeah, me either. Since the riots, I I stopped. You know. Yeah. Doesn't feel safe anymore. Unless you go get the devil's cookies. <laughs> well, that was in Vancouver. I didn't have to go oh. to Portland. My goodness. Well, I know the devil went down to Georgia, but apparently went down to Vancouver <laughs> as well. He said, I know how I'll rule over these people. I'll make them cookies. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really understand this sort of renewed fascination with... Uh, the devil. You see all these people wearing, uh, you know, like satanic T-shirts, and I mean, not just like overtly. I don't think that's renewed. I think renewed. I know. Just, like renewed. they're just less. Um, they're more open about it, but I don't yeah. think it's renewed. I don't know. I mean, it was kind of a that was kind of the thing in this. The I remember the seventies, early eighties, when everybody's worried about back masking on albums and things like that, and you had all the. I don't know. It, it just you hear about. Sammy Davis Jr. being a Satanist? No. Yeah. It's like Eddie Murphy 
uh, pointed that out. And he, there's also pictures of him hanging with Anton LaVey and stuff like that. It's weird. He's like, hey, man, you should really? try the Satan cat, man. He's <laughs> <weird."> <laughs> <laughs> I, I think did, you, <laughs> did you just say Satan cat? Yeah, that's, no, that's what Sammy said. <laughs> you going to hell, Davis, for that one. <laughs> Take the hell for that one. He's all he's all you guys got this Satan cat all wrong, man. <laughs> it, it's the big man upstairs was the guy who was wrong. You know, he was like what? <laughs> he didn't really say any of that. Yes, he? he did. He did he really? Yeah, there's like a there's this uh thing that Eddie Murphy was talking about um meeting with uh uh Sammy Davis and there's this other comedian with him and, and they were at this Italian restaurant in this corner and uh you know like how they on the pizza tables where they would have that light where it's red and they they put a candle in there. Yeah. He said that was on the table but it was up lighting him and he just started talking about Satan. He said, "Hey man, let me tell you about Satan. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and it freaked him out, you know? Yeah, yeah. Heck out of there, man. Yeah. <laughs> Gary was like, can you put these cookies in it to go? I got to get out of here. <laughs> go have the check, please. Uh, great conversation, Sam. <laughs> I thought you guys got it wrong. This I guy, Beelzebub, is a hip cat. <laughs> 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 I thought he was like he converted to Judaism or oh, something. Man. man, I guess not. Oh. No, he did, but there's there's something going on. I mean, uh, you should just look uh, into it. Yeah, okay. it Changing the subject, Wizard Sleeves is asking her. He says, are you guys opposed to doing art for album covers of any kind? Nope. Um, I would, I, it would depend. Like if someone, um, yeah, any kind part. Oh yeah. The any kind part. Exactly. That's, that's the part. But a gig is a gig. You two I do one for Puff Daddy. That's all I could tell you. <laughs> <laughs> if you can uh, find them now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you can find them. Someone would have to actually ask me to do an album cover before I could make that decision, though. Um, I did um, a, a piece for Shaquille O'Neal when he won his first championship ring. Uh, oh yeah, like, I, oh, cool. You showed that to me. Yeah, when um, he he won that his. Uh, manager was friends with my boss over at Consumer Products, and so they, they he they had that made for him, and um, it was like he was in love with Superman, so I had to draw him like uh, in Superman playing basketball or something like that, and I drew his manager in the piece, and blah 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 blah. Long story short, I got to go meet Shaq. Um, oh, yeah after doing this and he was recording like i think his first or his second rap album oh, and it was over where um was it sunset sound or something like that i think it was um a lot of famous records were made there and that's probably like the closest i came to like some kind of record thing but when meeting Shaq, he was remember uh what was it a uh, game of death when Bruce Lee walked up to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and he was yeah. sitting in that chair. Yeah, it was see. like that situation. Like I was like a midget going up to this, <laughs> this wow. giant and stuff like that. And he was sitting in this chair. He was almost as tall as me when he was sitting down. <laughs> well, dude, you're then, like, you know, how tall are you? Like five nine or something? I'm five ten, yeah. But okay, five ten, but yeah, I'm still, yeah. I mean, geez. That would be and, and he got he puts his hand out to to shake my hand and I put my hand in his. It was like a my hand turned into a baby's hand into an adult. <laughs> you know, it was just like and he's all, so you you're the one who did that cover, huh? Yeah. I really like it. It was really nice. And, you know, I put it in my game room. It was a beautiful piece. So, well. And then <laughs> um I have my portfolio with me and you, Dude, you always have your portfolio with you. Well uh, well, especially in that 
I was going to bring my portfolio because I had just de- done a, I, I think I was Robin covers, but I had a Superman on there and I knew I was going to impress him with that. Oh, okay. Was, gotcha. And he goes, oh man. He said, oh, this is really great. He said, uh, is this for sale? And I was, and it, I had just sold it right before. Oh. And he goes. Think how much you oh, get yeah. for it. Yeah, right. And and he goes, oh, you know, what did you sell it for? And I didn't want to tell him because <laughs> at the time, at the time, I'm thinking I made some money. I was like, oh man, I made four hundred bucks. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would have gave you a couple of thousand. And I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it again. You know, I'm yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> call, call BC begging him for a Superman cover. Anything with <laughs> but I, I did want to go back to that guy and say, "Hey, can I get that back?" You know, check. <laughs> you know, five hundred bucks for it. <laughs> exactly. You made a profit already. But it, 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 you know, it was cool being in that studio and seeing the whole situation where you know they're all making music. And, um, it wasn't as impressive as being in an art studio because I've been in a lot of art studios and stuff like that. Something about art studios are just so cool, you know. Well, especially if the artist, the studio you're in, has got some really just killer stuff, and you're just like, "Oh, this is so nice." You can just get lost in it. Yeah, I, I think the the best one I went in was Drew Drew Struzan's. Oh, been- oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah 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 and it was, oh, it, was it, it wasn't like i knew i was gonna go it was almost like i got hijacked and, and taken there which is is like uh if you get hijacked and taken to the nicest place that you've ever wanted to be <laughs> you're just like what was that, was that <laughs> jason palmer yeah jason yeah <laughs> he took me there out of the blue i was just he's like hey you want to go to drew's house i'm like drew who because <laughs> he's like drew, drew yeah first thing he goes basically. He goes, he's, he's right over here. He lives right over here. And we just turned right into his driveway. And he, Jason is, you know, that's his character. He'll he'll show up at a friend's house unannounced. <laughs> hey, I'm here. You know, that kind of thing. And I was just yeah. like, and he, and he goes, whatever you do, don't embarrass me. You know, and I'm like, wait a minute. You're going to his house unannounced. <laughs> you're already embarrassing me. <laughs> so... He didn't want me to, you know, go gaga over him and make a big to do and, you know, just treat him normal. So I went out of my way to like prostrate myself in front of Drew and started bowing. He's oh, Mr. Struzan, Mr. Struzan. And Drew thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Hell, that Jason was mortified and he loved that Jason was mortified. So. Oh. <laughs> That's funny, man. Yeah. Wow. Well, so how much stuff did he have, like, just laying around that never got used, like sketches and things? And did you get to, like, rifle through Oh, things? man. Okay, so the way it was set up is that he has this thing in the back of his house. And I thought it was just, like, a place where he had his car or barn or something like that. But it looked really nice. And... He goes, oh, you want to go to my studio? And I was already about to walk into his house. Because <laughs> he goes, no, no, it's back here. And so he <laughs> oh, yeah. back. <laughs> you're not, what are you doing? Exactly. He said, you're, you're not coming into my house. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back here. I'll show you the stuff and get the hell out. No, just kidding. <laughs> so he opens this. I, 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 I'm sure I'm glamorizing this more than what it actually was. But when we opened the door, the a light came out and it enveloped me (laughs) because there is nothing but the most iconic Drew Struzan paintings you could think of Mm. right there. And I'm like, wait a minute, we just drove and we just parked in your, and this is right here with like no, hyper security there was no alarm trips and any of this kind of stuff i was like okay i'm coming back here later <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be a painting light sir so <laughs> but no the uh, muppet painting and uh masters of the universe 
No kidding. Of, uh, indie wow. stuff and it was just and a, a few little Star Wars things here and there. But the thing that I it was hard to go around and just check out anything and you know you couldn't just really hop as soon as you everything that you've seen in a book yeah the original you know the those 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 copies of that doesn't do the original justice it, right it, right you, you see right. you see something like what he does it's something different and i was just dumbstruck and i stood in front of the masters of the universe that movie is garbage, but he made me think that the movie was awesome right. yeah. just by looking at that poster. And I couldn't move away from it because I'm looking at every little nuance. And I was just like, this is so amazing. It, it, it physically makes you feel like almost like lifted out of your shoes. You're just like, wow. <laughs> oh. you're like, how could anybody do this? You know, it stops becoming art for for a minute. You know. Well, Gary and I have a friend. I won't mention who it is. I don't know if he wants everybody to know or not. But um, he owns the Big Trouble in Little China poster, the artwork. Wow. Whoa. And I've been over to. Have you seen it, Gary? Yeah. Oh, it's freaking awesome. It's like. So, am I telling the truth? Yes. Yes. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, you can't believe it. I mean it's it's like it's it's wizardry. Yeah. Mm hmm So perfect and he just oh he certainly uh, figured out what he was doing and uh does it like no other. Yeah. All right, how you guys doing? We're gonna have to wrap up here because I gotta get over to Graham's show. I'm so in demand, you know how it is. <laughs> I got to go over and first. talk Star Trek where people actually want to hear us talk Star Trek. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You're outnumbered now. I know. I wouldn't dare bring it up now. I don't have any support. I'm like a red shirt just waiting to get uh, killed. Yeah. Even more nerd stuff on top of nerd stuff. Sheesh, man. <laughs> I, know. I got all the toys, too. What can I say? I'm watching a Romulan model or a ship. It's, it's already put together. Uh, you know, like, it, what do you call it? It's not an action figure. What do you call it when it's like a ship or something? But it's... Do they have names for that type of stuff? We're not helping you. No, no. <laughs> the, anyway, the Romulan Bird of Prey. Watch it on eBay right now because I want to get it. So, can't help it, man. My childhood. Clearly. I can't, can't let go of it. The older I get, the more I revert to my childhood. So. I also buy old comics. What are you going to do? You know, I just uh, clearly, yeah, if you, if you can do that, kind of problems. But as I often like to say, I'm going to have a heck of an estate sale. So <laughs> when I kick the bucket, you guys be watching the newspaper. That's true. Your your kinfolk are going to put that stuff up for sale. I know. Your body's going to still be warm. I know my. Uh, my son will probably take a couple of comic books that he wants to keep and the rest of it, man. See you later. Well, that's the amazing thing, man. You just accumulate so much stuff. Uh, you know, being married for 33 years. and It's just like... It reminds me, there was a, an editor, an ex-editor at Dark Horse that I worked with. I don't know if you worked with her. I won't say her name. Uh, she, she hasn't worked for them in, in a long time. Um, she lives in the Hawthorne district. Okay. In, and, yeah. and you know what they're famous for. It's like, it's like a uh, hippie town. Well, yeah, that's where Excalibur comics is. Yeah. Yeah. There's some good food trucks over there too. So both her and her husband are, are collectors, and and they recently had a um, an estate sale, and they had a website showing all the stuff that they were selling. Yeah. And I thought, okay, this is cool. They you know they're collectors, and they had a lot of cool stuff. And I'm reading the uh, uh, instructions, and part of the instructions uh, we recommend that everyone who 
who comes to our estate sale uh, wear a mask. <laughs> oh boy! It's like okay, you, how how much business are you going to lose? Yeah. <laughs> saying that. Yeah. And this was you know this wasn't that long ago. This was you know a, a few weeks ago. Oh, so thing is, though, if you're a hardcore collector, still, you get that stuff. You'll yeah, stop. They're yeah. still doing that. They're still, you know, wearing them. So is it is it like a, a Saturday market kind of thing where they're just going to keep the estate sale open every week until everything's gone? No, this was in their house. Oh, okay. I'm done. <clears throat> All right. Well, I've done enough. Yeah. Um, well, I'm kind of done. And Neocon, where are you at, man? Are you almost done? Yeah, uh, I was just throwing in some. Oh, color. he's like, I'm just adding extra characters. Oh, wait, wait, oh, wait, don't show it. Yet. Wait, wait, don't show it yet. He was coloring it. Don't show it. Yet. it. Okay, oh, you can. Color. Yeah, you can show yours last. So you. Yeah, still we'll have give you better. full screen. Yeah, just give us a second. Right. Keep on. Doing um, all right, we'll take a look at my brilliance first, and uh, oh. so that's the uh, from, of course, Gary's favorite episode. Uh, a private little war. That's the uh, that's the the medicine woman with the juju root. That I do her. remember her. Yeah, she was uh, saucy. She was a handsome woman. Yes, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but she's uh, getting a little bit of Mugatu trouble coming up behind her there. So uh, there you go. I think that should be the title of it. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, oh, very nice. nice. Mugatu Trouble. Yeah. <laughs> and that was inked almost entirely with hey, Aaron. One of these put guys. that title above the piece and slap it on a t-shirt and you're all set for the next uh, Trekkie Con. Oh my That's God. Right. You probably have to color it. But uh, yeah, so I used a Zig pen and a little bit of Micron for like her face. It was, you know, smaller line stuff. But there you go. I uh, did the underdrawing in blue. You know they quit making these the light blue coal erase pencils. Really? They still I make coal erase. Last time you recommended those, I I bought a box. I've got a couple boxes left. They don't make the light blue anymore. Uh -huh. They make the non photo blue, which I think is too waxy, and then they yeah. make the blue, which is too dark. But yeah. they quit making the light blue. I don't understand. But they, the, you're right. The their erasers are are great. See, Brian's problem is he's he's listening to Jimmy Reyes too much. You got to learn not to do that, Brian. Uh, I guess Jimmy criticized one of uh, Dan Lawless's drawings. Oh, really? On air. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Um, poor Jimmy. Anyway, so there you go. Let's see what uh, David's got for us. Oh, wait a minute. That's, oh, that's you're it. racist. Uh, <laughs> Oh, oh gosh, dang it! And that you nailed her likeness too, man. That's a bat girl. What's her name? Oh, Yvonne Craig. Yvonne Craig. Kirk's like yowzers. Okay. <laughs> that's exactly what he's saying. <laughs> oh, that's nice, David. That's very nice. Gosh, I hate to admit it, but that's oh. nice. Yeah. And so what is cool. she do that's actually so cool. doing? I mean, what is? I mean, She's enticing during the course her. of her day, what would require her to to <laughs> to pose <laughs> like that? She's, She's enticing him. on the show. She's enticing him. Yeah, it's a Green Orion slave girl, man. She knows what uh, what's up. <laughs> 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 okay, Aaron, that clears it up for me. <laughs> 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 Oh my goodness! All right, David, that was uh, that's pretty nice. Yeah, it is awesome. Yeah, at least at least second place today. So that's if we're <laughs> counting. We're not because it's not a competition. So right. uh, that, I, oh, that's good. All right, Whew. let's see what our uh, guest artist uh, Ania Khan's got for us. All right, so I got um, this. Oh. 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 How did you color that whole thing in like 45 wow. seconds? With the pepperoni outfit with the pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> right, you, gotta, you gotta finish that piece, man, so we can show it next week. Yeah, I'm gonna finish That's it. Finished. 
That is awesome. That's, That's awesome. great. Awesome. Love it. An action Thank Gorn. You. It took him. <laughs> it took him a minute and a half to get in that pose because he's so slow. <laughs> but uh, yeah, right. Because <laughs> of the so, rubber uh, suit. Yeah. <laughs> Gornography. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the way, the way man. you spotted your black so very three dimensional. I mean, he's yeah. just like coming off the page. Yep, Thank really, really much. nice. Man. Okay, it, you officially can't be on the show anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I, I felt pretty good when I finished, and now I feel like somehow I'm in third place. If anybody was keeping track, but good thing we're yeah. not. Um, yeah. Oh my goodness, that's good stuff, man. Yeah, amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for having me on. I really sincerely appreciate it, and I have fun. Well, thank you for coming on. I'm glad you uh, you were able to to, to suffer through us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to uh, I want to thank everybody uh, in the chat. I want to thank you for the super chats. I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, we couldn't do this show if you guys weren't here, making it what it is. We greatly appreciate it. And uh, please spread the word, uh, hit the like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, look for our campaign information. It's all in the description of this video. There's all links there. If you have not backed some of these projects, please uh, check them out at least. Um, you'll find Ania Khan's uh, website and uh, Indiegogo, uh, not Indiegogo, Instagram page link in there. And you can go and follow him. He's doing some really amazing work. Uh, so you want to keep track and keep up with him. And, um, there you have it guys. I'm running over to do the Star Trek show. Gary can't wait to tune in for that. And, um, thank you again, everybody for joining us. We had a great crowd. You guys were awesome. And we will see you next week right here on Graybeard studio. Good night, everybody.